Welcome to the Tuesday Show. My name is James Chen and I am joined by my fellow hosts, Mr. Ultra David and Mr. Tubaware. How are you guys doing? Well, I'm doing super great, James. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm tired, but I'm here. Whatever. Yeah. Everything's super great for me and where I live. I don't know about where you guys live, but where I live, all the news is great. Everything is great. Things are good and great. I believe that's true, David. I, I think you're making all that up. Uh, well, anyway, we have a show for you today. <laughs> and we're going to have these topics on the right. Of course, as you can see, on last the left, week we on began the left. using whatever it is. To the on, left, to as the As I left. motion to my right, the left of your screen is going to have all the topics. We started doing this last week. We're going to keep it up. I think it's been cool. I hope it worked out well last time if that was the feedback but let us know if there's anything else that you uh, would like us to see do we are trying to make it better as you can see the topics there include minecraft steve no doubt about that one we're going to talk about that uh we're going to talk about ed boone's cryptic tweet we're going to talk about footsies and i played it and stuff we're going to have a hawaiian shirt man on here to do an interview <laughs> nobody knows how that's going to go we budgeted anywhere between 10 and 80 minutes of time we yeah have no we idea. really have no idea no idea uh but i'm looking forward to that we're going to talk about uh belly all we're going to talk about grapplers and how they're actually the real footsies characters we're going to talk about viewer questions for five five matchup that there's some other tournament results and stuff to get to but let's begin by talking about this steve fella all right which, All right. uh, which do you mean? Do you mean Tasty Steve? Do you mean Sagem? What are we talking about here? I've never called Sagem Steve. To me, he's Steven. a Steven. Yeah, that's Steven. That's Steven. Get it right or pay the price. Uh, no, I'm talking about Steve from your favorite video game, Minecraft. You know what's really funny? Actually, you say that. I, I recently started playing Minecraft. Really? <laughs> like, legit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why not? I mean, uh, it's, it is one of the best or the best selling game of all time. Uh, it is extremely popular and has been for many years. Every single person who was born in the 2000s has played it at least 500 hours. <laughs> Every single person, Every, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's law of the land. It's the law. It's the law. Right. So it was announced that Minecraft Steve is in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, yeah. along with Alex and Zombie and Enderman. You can pick whichever of those. Uh, that was announced in a direct, and that direct announced that in a few days after that, Sakurai would have a lot more of a breakdown, and he did, and he talked all about the character. Very funky, unique game mechanics yeah. that this character has, especially in, I mean, in the context of any fighting game, honestly, but especially in a game like this. Uh, so he can gather materials, just like yep. in Minecraft, right? You're breaking blocks, you're gathering materials. You can use those materials in any number of ways. You can use them to craft or reforge your weapon and you have three different weapons you have uh the ability to create a block you have the ability to create multiple blocks you have the ability to use his mine cart and in order <laughs> to do that you have to use materials so he has all of these things that are tied to the materials gathering mechanic uh and, and the, on and top the... of that he has different stages uh or he has basically forced a way that stages will work in this game now Sakurai said that they basically reprogrammed how stages work and did that so that they could build blocks on every stage so that different stages would have different like ratios of the materials. Yeah, so and, depending I mean, on depending super on complicated. Yeah, depending on what stage you're on, you'll mine different materials specifically like on Donkey yes. Kong's, you know, the on the stage with the barrel on the bottom since it's all wooden planks, you get mostly wood, you know, and then if you're on like a castle stage, you mostly get whatever cinder blocks and on the beach you'll get sand. So, yeah. You know, I just I just wish that other fighting game devs had the not only the the passion to do things like that for other fighting games but the money and time and ability that's, like, that's true that is that's honestly nintendo a, a just has you know endless as the, the endless pockets right they can just throw money at this <laughs> stuff and capcom doesn't have that arxis doesn't have that bandai namco doesn't have that so we don't no. we don't get that type of stuff that Smash players do, man. I'm just, I'm jealous, oh, honestly. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that in, in a sec, but uh, just to round it out in terms of the news itself, different stages can have the ability to have to be like 
uh, uh, Final Destination, like the tournament stages, right? Right. Um, Battlefield and stuff. And when you do that, it stabilizes. So it's no longer like okay. random uh, materials. It's just it's like a set kind of oh, material per stage. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, which is great. So he like specifically talked about how they're designing not just with all of these things that they're thinking about, but also like tournament players like to play on a set number of stages and they like to have the ability to know what's going to happen. And so, okay, you know, we did this for them. Uh, he talked all about that as well. And then that's so I cool. guess that's it. Let me let me check the notes that I put down, but I believe that's it for the news itself. Dude. He said that Nintendo specifically asked him to make it and he like was talking about how uh, he wasn't sure how it was going to work, but like they wanted him to do it, so he did it. <laughs> I thought I thought all that stuff was super interesting as a experience with Sakurai and the character itself I think is super sick. Dude. But all right, all that, that that's all the news. What do y'all think about Steve, Alex, Zombie, and Enderman. Dude, the, 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 that one little clip of uh, Hungrybox reacting to things, when Jigglypuff put him to sleep, he actually goes into the bed, and yeah, then right? when Kirby absorbs him, Kirby turns into a cube. I mean, <laughs> seriously, Nintendo, I mean, Sakurai, <laughs> like, you are going above and beyond, like, it's I, I've never even played Minecraft, okay? Because clearly I wasn't born after the 2000s. Um, I or the 80s. Yeah. Or the 90s. God, 80s, yeah, well, I yeah. wish. <laughs> 70s, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or, or, or. You know, but, like, it's the, the attention to detail that they put for this character is just, I mean, I would want to say it's, like, amazing and crazy and... But it's it's literally par for course. You know what I mean? Like the what they do for all, like Terry, what they did yeah. for Terry was ridiculous. And so, you know, it's I want to be like I'm amazed by it, but at the same time, like I, it's crazy that we keep getting amazed by it. So yeah, like I was saying, man, I just I just wish that other fighting game devs had. You know the money and the—I the, don't want to say they don't have the passion. They obviously do, but yeah. man, like the the money and the culture of when it's done, it's done, right? Yep. Like yep. all these people have been waiting and waiting and waiting on new Smash characters. Well, this is why you wait, man, because all these characters are are incredible. It's it's worth the wait. So I, mm. yeah, I just wish that other devs had the same ability. That would be we would get you know high quality stuff from. Dude. You know, Arctis well, and Bandai Namco. And, I mean, not that we don't. It's just, like, the level of we're changing the stages for this specific character. Like, we don't get that. But the, I think there's a unique thing about Smash as well, even beyond that, which is that it's this, like, amalgamation of really different characters from all over video gaming. Right. Whereas when DLC characters come into other games, they're fit in, like, as a character in that game. Like, it's not... Sure, sure, sure. To, to, have, to have characters in other games is, like, how would Akuma play in te like he? This is this is Akuma in Tekken. This is Tekken Akuma, right? This right. is Negan Akuma. It's not like you're not like bringing in all of the <laughs> things that the character has from their own game. You're just like now oh, the characters in this game. Right. Whereas in Smash, in at least some of these DLC cases, they have been real, uh, uh, real broad in all the stuff that they've brought in. I think this is the best example of that. But Terry's a great example of that. Uh, Ryu and Ken previously, yeah. right? Last last game sure. are a great example of that. Uh, Hero is a great example of that. I think they, you know, the, all the spells you can do with that character are super interesting and very, very detailed, very minute. And so they they have this game that they've made where the whole point of it is these are all really different characters from different games, and we're just going to smash them together. And in order for that to, to smash work, smash them that, together. Bam! In order for that to work, they have to pick characters that would make that work but they have to they have to bring in the game right it's the game as well not just the character itself and that i think is different than how all the other devs do it um i'm not opposed to either way but i do think it's super fascinating to see how smash does it because it's it is different i, I like yeah. it a lot dude just some of the stuff that the character can do when he was building the blocks to block pikachu from returning to the stage yeah that's really like, cool that just Super seems unique. so wrong <laughs> Uh, no, it, it seems so right to me. Yeah. Ooh, right? That's, yeah, isn't that so interesting, dude? Again, so e even even beyond like the the very detailed design and all of the Minecraft details that they brought in, as far as the character itself goes, 
I'm super interested in it. Like, it's got this ranged grab. It has the ability to do a mashed up tilt, which is very unique. Uh, it has the ability to gimp people in, like, a very unique way. Uh, I, I love it. I think, you know, look, I'm not playing Smash competitively, but I am really looking forward to playing with the character right. just when my brothers and I screw around. And <laughs> I hope people play it because I'd love to see it in tournaments. Sure. Yeah. One of the funniest things is like, so both my brother and one of my other friends, you know, they have kids and both of their kids are completely obsessed with Minecraft and everything. So when the announcement came out, I actually went on to Discord and talked to them and I was like, dude, did you guys see the new announcements or whatever like that? And so my brother was like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Let me go show my kids. And his kids were like, oh, they watched it like three times and see all the references and all this stuff like that. My other friend went to go tell his kid and his kid responded with, oh, yeah, I've seen it already. Nice. <laughs> and he was like, it's, he's like, too late, man. Now my kid is going to teach me how to set up my PS5. Like, that's just how it is. <laughs> yep. Already plugged in. That's they, awesome. Yeah, they're getting older and they already know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, the, the so game. It- it's it's really hard to tell. I, I've I've been trying to pay attention to what Smash players, competitive players, think about this character. Like, is it does it seem super good? Um, I, and I've seen responses that are basically ranging from like it looks overpowered. Like this block building thing is like absurd. Like how can this be balanced? <laughs> uh, to well, the character has pretty bad range, and like I'm not sure. And are you really going to be able to gather materials like that in a match? Like, is that practical to do while you're like being chased around? Yeah, I, I get I get shades of Phoenix Wright when I see yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it involves building towards a goal like that. It's, mm, good luck. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, because you can make a block with any of the materials, but it might like fall apart as dust like instantly versus other stuff which requires that you hit it a couple of times. Um, and maybe you get like a great maybe you get diamond or whatever the maximum is in terms of your weapons but like maybe you get wood or i don't know some crap so it's just it seems like you'll have to know so much as the player and you'll have to have a super strong awareness of like where you are for materials gathering purposes what materials you have you know, what materials you are willing to spend at any one time. So, like, it's just, like, a lot to know. Different matchups are going to be different, so, I'm sure. Different right. stages are going to be different, I'm sure. All this stuff just requires, like, a lot of the player. So, from what I've seen, competitive players in Smash are, like, pretty up in the air about it. But, you know, we'll see when it comes out. Yeah. I mean, did you, so when they do, like, the Final Destination versions of the stages and stuff like that, is the materials that you get randomized? Or, like, how does that work? I would I assume so, right? I, I would assume it would have to be. No, I don't think so. I think I think that it's what? the same. Yeah, I, I believe. And at least some spots, they did show in the explanation that Sakurai had, that in at least some spots, there's the same stuff. I don't know if that's the case huh. all the way throughout the stage, okay. but... For sure, in at least some spots, there's. Well, the same. I mean, that, that that can mean you just completely counterpick the character by picking Donkey Kong stage, right? Well, you can't. Then he has Kong. to get wood. Well, I'm just saying, like a stage that has wood, right. only wood. Then you just completely nullify Steve by making him pick up crappy elements. That sucks. Yeah, but I I, I think I think they work. just made it so that it doesn't match. I think you just get the material. At that. that that is that is true on the. Final Destination and Battlefield stage. Right, yeah, right, right. That's what I mean. That's what I mean spots. for yeah. those ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, and the and the Lilat stage, where you're, like, flying on the back of the yeah. spaceship. <laughs> you get steel or, or iron, I guess, yeah, uh, right, a lot. Right. Like, that kind of stuff. Maybe that would come into it to some degree, but, yeah, as long as you're playing on one of the, like, specific, like... Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Omega so the, the chat's confirming specific. you can get all materials on all stages no yeah. matter what. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're predetermined where they are on the fi- okay. Final yeah. Destination yeah. and Battlefield stages. But, yeah. Okay, that's, I mean, that's better then. Obviously, that was my understanding. one thing that we didn't talk about was, you know, there were some people who were just like, why are you putting this character? Like, no, well, kind of thing. One of the biggest idiots. Can you believe yeah. that? Can you believe, like, it doesn't make sense for in somebody's mind that the most sold game ever doesn't deserve a spot in smash like it's that's ridiculous <laughs> How, not, what not to not to mention like smash has like 90 characters in it now right yeah so if you're unhappy about one dlc but there's 89 <laughs> other chances for you to like something that's, like, that's <laughs> on you man like it's not that's not nintendo's problem that's not smash's problem you know bugger off yeah no it, look the the game is 
super deserving of being in there. Some people have, like, random games that, like, they themselves prefer from 15, 20 years ago. Uh, whatever, man. This is... You, I feel like you can't quibble about this. And, uh, and the way that they pulled it off, this extremely unique, interesting character, I feel like, again, not even as somebody who's, like, actively playing competitively, but somebody who's just going to watch and play casually, I feel like I'm really excited to see people take that down. I, I'm so much more interested in that than... What if it was, like the next sword character from i don't know whatever Fire other Emblem. video game other rpg from japan that i've never played i don't know yeah. like what if it was that <laughs> character what a waste that would be there's yeah. already a hundred of them so this is a great opportunity to bring in really unique game it's mechanics really look I, I, I agree it. i know this is adding another sword character to the game but i'm still <laughs> waiting i already made joke baby i was i was hot off the presses on that one on no Twitter. no no dude you're not even that's not where i was going i'm saying i know this would add another sword character to the game but i'm still waiting for dirk the daring dude i'm still holding out for dirk yes. the daring give it up, give it up james Here, that's like you'll be holding on forever yeah come I... on look they put terry in the game so like there's definitely some Terry vi- definitely had a better chance than Dirk the Daring. For sure, yeah. <sighs> Dirk the Sorry, Daring James. is classic. He is an icon in video game history. He definitely needs to be in there. I feel like history is doing a lot of work there. Like, that is yeah. a super operative word. Because Terry, <laughs> Steve, all these other characters are not just 40 years ago. They're also today. Correct. Whereas Dirk the Daring is from... 1972. I mean, Minecraft and... wasn't from 40 years ago. <laughs> no, I'm saying, saying, saying I'm they're, they're, they're it is around, around today. today. Yeah, it around yeah, today. but I mean, that's yeah, the yeah. thing, right? Whereas they don't have to do that. Fun. They put... okay, That's enough on that topic. We are at time. They put Pac-Man in the game. Ah, James, we're at time, James. Everybody knows Pac-Man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Steve looks sick. Well done. Well <sighs> done. All right, let's move on to the next one now. Do you have the ability to put this up on the internet? Uh, I could if you want me to. I do. This is, as you can see, we're going to be talking about They Are Coming. That K could tip you off as to what this will be. This is a Mortal Kombat announcement. Ed Boon tweeted very simply that there's going to be an announcement Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific time, 8 8 a.m. Uh, central time and i think james is dragging up the uh, the teaser the teaser to the trailer yeah, yeah the that is, the um but yeah so i mean while james is bringing it up it looked like abuna had tweeted out a like eight second clip of what we should expect so or you know what we might expect yeah yeah well that will get involved in some stupid speculation once it's been shown <laughs> Sorry, this this thing is chugging. My 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 Google Chrome is chugging right now, dude. We'll talk about this in a little bit. This will hopefully all change very soon. <laughs> like yes. I'm literally scrolling through the Google Docs and it's like not moving at it's all. A little further than that. A little further. Dude, than I'm that. trying there to is. scroll. I can't even get to the tweet because my thing is not scrolling. Trust me. Well, only for so long will you have to deal with that, James. Yeah. We'll talk about that later as well. We will. They are coming with a K. Yeah, dude, something is, is going well. on here because I can't even read my Twitch chat on the Google Chrome right now. It's Something's wrong with my internet. It's actually not you my computer sure right internet? now. Because I think the stream is still going through just fine. Yo, yeah, 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 but, like, something's weird. Like, my whole Chromecast is pixelated, and the Chromecast has nothing to do with PC. There's something wrong with my machine right now, or it's just internet or something. Everything's wrong with your machine, James. Well, it's not the machine right now. Like I said, that's the problem. What is happening over here? Okay, there we go. Yeah, people... frames are dropping. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with my internet. Actually, it's, I, dude, it's definitely your your computer. I think James, it's being overloaded. It's too much, too much going on. Like I said, All Chromecast right. has nothing like to do with it, clip. though. 
Chromecast yeah. has zero to do with my computer. That's not how Chromecast works. Well, right, but it's not just the Chromecast. Anyways. But I'm uh, saying, you, that's what I'm saying. Working? The Chromecast is pixelated. So there's something more that's wrong than just than just all my right, computer right, this right is now. Is the thing, can you press play on this thing? Yeah, are, are we watching the video? All right. Yay. All, right. all yeah. that work for that. Okay. We did it. Anyway, there it is. So some Tarkatan, which is the same species that Baraka is, if you are unaware, is running in the forest. And he's looking behind him. And who knows? Nobody knows what's behind him. But this tweet from Mortal Kombat says they are coming. And so that... You know, there's been rumors about DLC for a long time. It's new characters coming out, a new combat pack coming out. And this says they are coming, so maybe more than one character being announced as well. I don't know. What do you all think about this? Uh, I feel like it's pretty obvious that there's going to be more than one character okay. announced okay. or shown, wow. at, right. at least use that. All right. However, okay. I feel like the, the, the tease that they're trying to get at here with, you know, someone running through the forest is very clearly Ash from the Evil Dead. If Why? anybody's ever seen an Evil Dead movie, uh, there's these clips and scenes in the movies where an unknown presence is chasing people through a forest. Uh, we don't see the the presence. There's nothing tweeted or you know shown in the clip there, but someone's looking backwards and running, just like the uh, Evil Dead movies. Uh, also, Warner Brothers had accidentally sent out emails regarding Evil Dead and Ash. Um, like a year ago at this point, so <laughs> I feel like. Language. Yeah, Some lawyer put that in there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, copyright stuff. So, yeah. I, I feel like it's pretty obvious that he was coming, and this is a, a great way to to you know kind of tease that he's on the way. I think that's right. I think I as soon as you reminded me of the scenes from Evil Dead, I was like, yeah, that totally makes sense. And of course, it's not it, even before that. Even before the the leak of that, there were rumors that Ash was going to be involved. Oh yeah, forever, for sure. Forever ago. So, For sure. yeah, that makes sense to me. And I think that's cool. I mean, Ash mm. is, like, exactly their kind of character when it comes to putting it in movies. Is it from... Does Ed Boon remember it fondly from the 1980s when he was in his youth and he really liked horror and action movies? If so, it's going to be a character in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, but see, the like, problem it, with right? it is, Ash isn't made today. He's not popular today. No, so there's but, no reason to is, put Ash in the game. Robocop. Neither is Robocop, right, yeah. neither is Alien, ne Terminator. Uh, neither is, neither Terminator. is Dirk yeah, the Robocop Daring, Terminator either. Is neither is Dirk the Daring. <laughs> oh, this is... I didn't realize you were going there because that's so irrelevant to modern times. <laughs> also, uh, these are all franchises we're talking about. Robocop's a franchise, Terminator is a franchise, yeah, yeah. Alien is a do franchise. Do you guys not yeah. realize... Evil Dead is a franchise. Do you guys not realize how big Dragon's Lair was back in the day, dude? I do, I do. I've, you know how I know? You know how I know? Is I've read the history of it. It's in history books. It's in history books. Um, whereas I'm still experiencing, you know, Terminator definitely, there's still stuff like happening, like even recently, right? There's the yeah. movie. Yeah, Evil so, Dead as a show. Yeah, it, right, right. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And it's got these angles of both like old people recognize it, which is a requirement for being a Mortal Kombat DLC. Jason, Freddy from Friday the 13th. Other like, days. yeah, these ancient 1980s characters. I really think what happens is that Ed Boon is like, you know what character I like from movies back in the day? And then they're like, okay, Ed, we'll put it in there. I so think I really think that here, here's my thing with Ash, though. And every every time we're seeing one of these DLC characters get added to Mortal Kombat, uh, there's always the antithesis of that character, right? So we had Alien and Predator. We had Jason and Leatherface. Oh. Um, so when we had Robocop and Terminator, right? And there was a Robocop vs. Terminator video game in the 90s, things like that. Interesting. Um, where where does Ash like? What's his antithesis? What does Ash fight against? Like I don't know what that goes with. That's the only thing that would make me think maybe it's not Ash. Huh. But hmm. yeah, I, I just don't I just don't know what he what who he fights against if not the Evil Dead. It could be Rambo. But but why? <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't make any all sense. All the other ones that name made sense. Why does I, Ash fight Rambo all of a sudden? I, I don't know what to tell you. All right, I don't know. Fair enough. They both have boomsticks? I'm not really sure. 
Yeah, but maybe. I, do, I don't know. I do think that Ash could be cool. He would fit in the universe of MK, obviously, quite oh, well. Oh, very well, very well. All right. Is Melina going to get announced? I think so. Do you really? I do, actually, yeah. I, I, I feel like it's they're not going to keep her out. I don't think Ed Boon would and like purposely antagonize people and say, oh, she's never coming back if she wasn't actually coming back. Like It's such an Ed Boon move to be like, no, there's no way, and then it happens. So I, I do I, actually I, think I, she I might almost be feel like back. I feel like the way that they people yell at him so much in every tweet he puts out that it's like, hey, here's this tweet about what I had for lunch. Where's Melina? Where's Melina? Like, I feel like if I were Ed Boon at this point, I would ixnay Melina forever. Dude, I, I hope you're right so he doesn't encourage <laughs> behavior like that. I hope you're right, James. I agree. I hope it's not her because I absolutely agree with both of you that the behavior of Melina fans has been absurd. Like, yeah. absurd. Like, Ed has occasionally put up, like, serious tweets. Like, he's mostly a joker, but sometimes he does things up on Twitter that's, like, about actual news or politics. And every, even on those, even, like, mm -hmm. I was sorry to hear that somebody passed away. It's like, here comes yeah. some idiot. Melina nerds. Uh, yeah, it sucks. I, like I said on Twitter recently, it's amazing to me that he still uses Twitter and checks the replies. And I know he checks the replies because... I have seen him specifically retweet replies and read replies to tweets where, where I was like saying this about him. I can't believe he, he reads stuff. And he retweeted it. And when that happened, I got the floodgates opened on me <laughs> <Yep>. of who <laughs> talking about Melina and whatever other nonsense. Mute and the conversation. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, he would still be reading the conversations and he did reply to some of them or like some of them. So he's still... I don't know how he does it. He has stamina like nobody else, I guess. But you know, he's doing that somehow. Anyway, I hope it's not Melina. Dude, you know what would be the better. best? You know what would be the best? <laughs> if they put Melina in the game in Ash's intro, she comes out of the ground as a zombie, and then Ash, like, blows her oh. away with the shotgun and goes groovy and they do that at the that start of the so at the start of the intro like that the the trailer comes out and she's like ah! and then all of a sudden she gets blown up and he just goes groovy and then that that's it but like so oh, dude James. dude it can't well, that, Melina's such a great idea Melina's half Tarkatan or whatever right like she's half Baraka's she is, yeah. race right so that dude that actually makes a lot dude that would be so cool I just remember the <laughs> The Ninja Turtle announcement for Injustice and how cool that was. Yeah. yeah. I could see them doing something dope like that for, for the Ash announcement, too. I hope so. Other people want Rain. I don't care at all, personally. To me, to me, this is the only Mortal Kombat game that has had any interesting characters. And that's they've done that by, like, making... I mean, like, as characters, not just gameplay, but, like, the characters themselves. Um, they've done that by, like, taking characters that I thought were throwaways, like Baraka and... Scarlet and being like, actually, they have real personalities and they have motivations and they're they are cool looking and they could do that with Rain. Maybe Rain ends up being cool, but to me, no Mortal Kombat character has ever been cool until right now. So, anyway, <laughs> we have run out of time. James, can you put the timer back on the screen that Tubo and I are looking at? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. I moved it over to put the video on the screen. Okay, gotcha. All right, sweet. So we have run out of time. Let's go to the next topic, which is, as you can see, about Footsies, which is now on Steam. So Footsies Rollback Edition has now been released on Steam. Footsies is a 1v1, super, super simplified fighting game, which is what it sounds like. It's just you and the other person with the same character, mirror match always, uh, playing for Footsies. You have... A Ryu crouching medium kick, you have a third strike Ryu close medium kick, and you hit, try to hit confirm each one of them on a whiff punish or just hit confirm by itself into a Ryu donkey kick for the knockdown. Whenever you get a knockdown, you get a point. Um, you also have the ability to like guard the crush. You can, you can block, but if you get hit three times while you're blocking, uh, you will get guard crushed, and then they can knock you down. But you can cancel the guard crush into a raging demon, which will get through their thing, you have dashing. So it's really simple. There's only back and forth and one attack button. Now, can, can um, there's you... also DPs. You, there's also, DPs. Yeah, you can hold the button and do a random dragon punch, or you can hold the button and do a far, super far uh, donkey kick from even further than they expect. So with one button and left and right, 
Hi Fight has made a game that has a lot of stuff going on. It's been out, but now, like I said, it's on Steam with rollback, so you can play online. Is 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 the Raging Demon something you could do at any time, or do you need like I know there's no resources in the game, so yeah, I think it's only when you're in Guard Crush. Oh, really? No, because I've seen no, you, dash you, up. You raging... can dash up and do it. Yeah, yeah I've dash seen up. dash oh, Raging that's Demon. Oh, okay. the, the thing yeah. is, a demon has very short range. I mean, it, it goes less range than any of your normals. So. Oh, okay, okay. Only when I don't know what the I don't I don't know what the, oh, the deal that, is. Yeah. Okay. So I so I've only seen it on Guard Crush. So you can only do it when you have zero shields, which means that's like that's why I've seen it on Guard Crush. And I'm pretty sure sense. it's just like what, attack, attack, forward, attack, attack. Like yeah, that. something like that, yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's been really successful, it looks like. If you look at the Steam sales charts, uh it's consistently been one of the most sold games recently yeah dude. Um, of, like the new game so that's really really dope for i fight man good for him dude, he just says yeah. you can use it once per match now is what it is because i definitely saw like round oh. one fight dash up raging demon or something so i think it's uh, oh, okay. once per fight but yeah i mean the thing yeah. about it is what he's been doing with it like he's even put all like these little whiff punishing training tools he's made an arcade mode with different personalities of like the uh, the character, the, the opponents and stuff like that. Yeah. The amount of love and work that he's been putting into this game is really great. And also a sign of what happens when one person or few people are in charge of their own game and can make all their own decisions. <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is not one of the topics we have listed, but I, I can kind of segue a little bit into this. But Code Mystics has even said, look, we want to put lobbies into KOF UM, 2002 UM, which has been wildly popular right now because it just got that yeah. rollback netcode and people are playing it. And they're like, this is amazing. But Code Mystics was like, we can't put it in there unless SNK lets us you know, budgets us to do these things. So let them know. And this is always the hardest thing, right? So it's like you have big company versus indie developers. And it's why there's a lot of push towards the indie developers these days, because they can actually show the love and the care that they want into their games, you know? Yeah, I think that's all totally right. And and I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've just been playing. So I picked it up yesterday uh, for the the new version. And I have been trying to do hit confirm practice and whiff punishing practice. And these are such cool little mini games in the training mode because it tells you all the info that you need. So you're just trying to get a hit confirm, right? He has the dummy set to auto to random block. Mm -hmm. And when it hits, you're supposed to do the second uh, attack button follow up for the donkey kick for the knockdown. Right. And and it lets you know where you are in the like hit confirm window, which goes up to 18 frames. And if you're in 19 frames, you're too late. 18 frames, you're good. And it tells you like what your reaction was. Right. And so it tells you that all the way up to like 29 frames. I've seen. I'm not sure if it goes further than that, but uh, at least that. And so it'll let you know. My best so far is 14 frames, which is really rare. In general, I've been. I would say my average is like 19 to 20 frames. So like I'm usually just outside of the window for it. But I'm really interested in, in trying to train it up. It's such like a, a boiled down idea of a hit confirm. And I think it's definitely doable to improve. I already feel like I'm improving slightly. So I'm working on that. And the whiff punishing mode is ex also exactly what it sounds like. Uh, they have the dummy putting out random attacks. And you have to try to whiff punish it on reaction. And it's the same kind of window where it'll tell you, like, if you're just a little late, 19 frames, right? You're just a frame off. Right. If you get it one frame before that, you do get the whiff punish. And so you are you can tell how far off you are in time as opposed to just knowing that you missed it. And that lets you know, like, you just have to shave down one more frame. Or maybe you're, like, five frames off. And you're like, wow, what happened there? I'm waiting. <laughs> uh, I, that, it's been a really fun thing for me. So I'm I'm intending to train up and try to get better at that. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a, uh, if nothing else, it sounds like a, like a neat tool just to, like you said, train up on hit confirms and whiff punishes. You know, if you don't want to use it for anything else, you don't want to play people online. That sounds like a really neat way to use something. And the game is only like, what, three ninety nine? dollars 99 It like is three ninety nine. yeah. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, you can't really go wrong spending that. Go give Hi-Fi your money. <laughs> you didn't pay me to say this, by the way. I don't even yeah. have the game, but yeah, <laughs> I'm taking David's word for it. I mean, you yeah, should, yeah, right? Yeah, super cool. 
we we have codes for it and everything. So yeah, I just was, have to remember was, the, the trial version. That, that was the beta. Version. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's I, right. That's right. I okay. did play the beta, but I didn't play. I haven't played okay. the full okay. full version yet. I like it. Nicely done. High fight. Who's in the chat? Good work. You recommend that Again, we play arcade mode without any spoilers. Yeah, I've, I've seen things. I've seen people play through it. I've already been spoiled, but yeah. some of the characters are really funny, especially the the last one. Yeah. Again, I just I don't understand where High Fight gets the time. He must be the most productive human being in the world. I don't think Dude, he does. Seriously. It. Do you do anything for fun, High Fight? I mean, do you like? Go to karaoke bars and sing every once in a while, or just like you. Know. I, I hope not right now, man. There's a global pandemic, so <laughs> I, I hope that all this extra time is. A you can go to Boots by yourself. I mean, come I on. Live in Japan, I would. which is taking a little bit better than than we are. Yeah, uh, that's fair. Uh, that's fair. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. How many online tournaments are being set up for it? Because uh, if there's not a lot, maybe I'll start streaming some tournaments for it. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I really recommend that people check it out. It is a lot of fun. It's very intelligible. You know, there's you're not you go into training mode for a minute and like you know all the things. <laughs> but there's still significant strategy in there and, and I like that a lot. I think it's a really nicely done thing. It just it has made me think of things that were similar ideas of like how to boil down a fighting game in a way that's still interesting. Sure. Like a dive kick or like a senior footsies. Right? Those two I think are like sort of progenitors of this mm -hmm. and those have been really fun for me in the past i spent a lot of time in dive kick for sure i played that game a lot and uh and really had a blast and a few times that i saw senior footsies i played that as well so it's really cool to have a game that's like this so we can just play from home nice work yeah and i Thanks, still high fight. i still have a theory that high fight is actually more than one person that the th after high fight stands for the herd so he's actually high fight the herd. There's more than one of them, and that that's how they watch every single stream and have highlights. You know, the hive. There you go. High fight the hive. There you go. So the dread pirate high fight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah. But nice work. Nice work out there. All right. Thanks All right. to Balbury and to uh, Vitrix V, by the way, for the subscriptions. Uh, anything else to say about footsies? Uh, no. Okay. No, I don't think so. In that case, let's get Hawaiian Shirt Man going it's on. It's time here. to party, bro! Oh, we, God. Again, we have a Hawaiian Shirt Man on here for the interview. We're going to take a break and get that set up. Uh, I don't know how it's going to go. We, I absolutely have no idea. We have can no I have a conversation with them? Can I be like, hey, hi, uh, can, hey, uh, 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 Hawaiian Shirt Man, um, where are you from? How long have you been playing fighting games? I have no idea. Can we talk like that? We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. All I care about is partying. You do care about partying. Bros. Bros. All right, let's take a short break, and we're going to work on that. We'll be back in a little bit. What up, Shinobi Method? You're ready to party, are yous? I've done some partying in my day. That's all. I've well, I've done maybe more than my fair share of partying in my day. <laughs> I definitely did it back in the day. I've seen it. I used to party during the night, and then I would wake up and I would parry during the day. That was my college. That was my college experience. Half of that sounds fun. Third track sucks. Hey, Brandon, I think you're muted. I don't think anybody can hear you. Am I really? No, I you're not you. muted. You should be there. Hey, Brandon, yeah. I think I think nobody can hear you. Uh, nobody caught the last clip. That you oh, I, I said third track sucks. Yeah, sorry. You know what? I just got a message from my phone. It says that we have to kick Tubbleware off the show. It's unfortunate timing. Yeah, I mean, in case you didn't hear him, he said Third Strike sucks. Jesus. Just, just repeating that. Yeah, I think that. No, I think that'd be super cool. Uh, I mean, I've always been the kind of guy who has a lot of novelty socks, so I would love to buy Third Strike socks for sure. 
you actually have a lot of novelty socks? I don't believe that. Yeah, I used to have a lot of novelty socks. Used to. Hmm. I mean, let's put it this way. Third Strike socks being a novelty sock would make sense because Third Strike is such a novelty game, so... It's true. Very much not a Street Fighter game. Yeah, it's basically the least Street Fighter of all Street Fighter games. It's like its own thing. It's like barely... No, you know, speaking of Street Fighter, though, you know what's really cool is the Alpha 2 tournament Justin ran. Oh, yeah, 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 that was really cool. Man, we should have added that to the tournament results. Jeez, what was I thinking? I forgot about it completely. You're getting quieter, Brandon, so... Am I? I'm not, I'm not moving my mic, I promise. I'm just sitting in the same spot. Uh, talking. Let's see, that's the wrong one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Today Show. There is no reason why David and I have changed at all whatsoever. Uh, but, oh, dang, now your color is even different. So now the green screen thinks your beard is part of it. And so you're, you look so funky, David. It's intentional, James. That's how I party. That's how I party. Oh, no, it's going terribly. Oh, 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 okay, maybe oh, you're back. Kind of. that might be a little bit better, but we have uh, a completely unknown situation here. This is either going to turn out to be amazing or completely crazy, but it is party time right now here. We have a very special guest for you guys here on the stream today and that is going to be mr hawaiian shirt man all the way from hawaii coming here to talk to us on the ultra chen tv show let us bring him in let's check out here we go there so hawaii yo <laughs> bro. bro bro is it my turn now <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's your turn. You can. Oh my God. Okay, there we You're go. Here. I'm here. Dang, he's here on. The, he's literally here in the Ultra Chen Studios, joining us here. As soon as he finds a place to settle down, we will definitely. I will definitely try you to. Uh, settle down and all. Oh, I got just the place. I got just the place. Wait a minute. Can't settle down, Hawaiian shit, man. What are you thinking? <laughs> also, can I can I point out right now? I'm the only fat guy here, and I don't have an Hawaiian shirt. There's something wrong with this. I know, right? Image. What happened, dude? How have you not have? How do you not have a Hawaiian shirt? It's like something that you're guaranteed to have. Wait, what is happening over here? Oh, all right, changing the scenery, bro. <laughs> what up, man? <laughs> My monitor, my the, the the space that I've allocated for him isn't big enough to, to really display. A, a oh, role that constrain other men. Did it say Ultra Chen TV on his? Right? Did it say Ultra Chen? It does. No, it says it's it's Ultra Chen. Ultra <laughs> I have to try my best to imitate here. So there we go. Yep. Look. All right, Hawaiian shirt man. Thanks a lot for joining us on the show. We wanted to bring you on and commiserate with you for a little while and see what's up and see how you're doing. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good all the time. <laughs> <laughs> how are you, bros? It's good to see you, Jen. It's good to see you, Ultra David. It's good to see you, Tube Aware. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate yeah, I know. You. So, what? Yep. <laughs> Honestly, man, we we didn't plan on asking you anything because we have no idea what to ask you. Here's what I want to ask. I want to I want to ask this. All right. A man doesn't go directly from wearing regular shirts to wearing Hawaiian shirts. All right. It's there's got to be a progression there. You start out wearing regular shirts. Eventually, you know, you end up down on the dole and you have Hawaiian shirts. I want to know what the gateway shirt was. I want to know what your entrance was into being Hawaiian shirt man. Bro, I went to the Goodwill one day. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just looking for some nice shirts. And they had a bunch of these Hawaiian shirts on the rack. They were like a dollar a piece. 
I couldn't pass it up. They were so beautiful. I bought like 80 of them. And now I still have them to this day. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it still a good deal after you spent $80 on shirts, though? I, I feel like you eliminated the purpose there. 80 shirts, bro! 80 shirts! All right, For a dollar right. piece! Hey, you're, you're, right, you're, right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. Uh, well a question i mean obviously you know we're a fighting game show i'll try to keep this a little what brought you into street like how long have you been playing fighting games what got you into street fighter 5 bro i played street fighter since i was a little boy and i played it on the super nintendo i went to the grocery store and i played the hyper fighting i love street fighter i love fighting games i love most games what got me into this is one of my friends told me about this little thing called Texas Showdown a few years ago, and I went there and I had a good time. I didn't win. Uh, Alex Valle, he beat the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but he shook my hand and he gave me some pointers. And I was like, you know what? These guys are all right. I think I'll stick around a little while. <laughs> And uh, to kind of build on that, we saw you at Capcom Cup this year. I saw you, which that. was, yeah, which was a surprise to me. I had never, I had never even heard of Hawaiian Shirt Man before that moment. Then everybody's like, "Yo, you need to watch this guy on Twitch." So I immediately became a fan. Uh, do you plan on, you know, when the pandemic's over, going to other offline events? Bro, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go if it's safe to go. I'm gonna party. I'm gonna wear my mask if I need to. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna hit the hitbox. Hopefully, I'm not gonna break it. But I'm gonna do my best, and I'll see you bros at tournaments again someday. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll definitely see me there, cause you know I've been playing a lot lately. I mean, I've been I've been trying to get a little bit better at, at fighting games. Uh, for a while, I hadn't been taking them super seriously competitively, but my intention this year was to play offline, you know, enter majors. Obviously, that didn't end up working out. Um, I'm curious, because, you know, I'd like to know, have you ever beaten a Honda player? Uh, I, I'm asking because, you know, so far, I haven't seen you do it. Um, every time I've seen you play against Honda, you have lost. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I've only seen you play against Honda when it's you and me who get matched up online. Ooh. Bro, I, I think that's a difficult matchup for old Zeku. <laughs> it ain't easy for me. I have a lot of fun. You do the hands, and I just want to push the buttons, too. I want to get involved with the hand smashing. <laughs> It's, it's such a I like Honda. I've played it before. I do the sumo smash over and over, too. I know how it is. <laughs> he seems I, like... I like you point out it said two, just to let David know where his, his love of Honda is at. Oh, yeah. No, he's right. He This guy down here is absolutely right. I am mashing on punches constantly. I He, he knows. But let me tell you, he's right as well that when... I start mashing the hands, he likes to try to mash the buttons back, and he'll tell you how that has gone. It looks like an invitation to party. It's just like Honda's like, give me a bunch of high fives, but it just never works out that way. So I totally get you, man. I totally get you. <laughs> a, a what do you boat? got going on there? It's like a boat uh, on his... On the, oh. <laughs> Yo, is it... Are you a pixelated boat? It's a pixelated it's a duck, boat bro. On, on water, dude. <laughs> okay. Now, look... Obviously, Zeku uh, has like costumes that look like he has a Hawaiian shirt on and everything like that. Was that what drew you to him, or was is there something about Zeku that just pulled you in in particular? Bro, I like that I can change forms. I like to feel young again. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that I could do that over and over, I could be a mature gentleman or I can be a young buck. Either way, I love doing it all the time. <laughs> does that uh, does that kind of just reflect who you are in real life? I mean, surely you can't party 24-7, right? You have to take off the Hawaiian shirt at some point. Bro, it's like Heckle and, J Heckle and Hyde. I, I forget the guy's name. But... <laughs> And the day I work for a major corporation, bro, I work for a major corporation, and at night, I'm just letting it all go. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. That's awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> so uh, I was I was actually curious. Uh, you know, you said you love Street Fighter, which is, that's fine. 
But being a party man, I thought maybe you'd want to play some games that have more party moments, like, say, a BB Tag or a Marvel, something that's a little bit more wacky. What draws you to Street Fighter rather than something with more of those <laughs> type moments? Bro, it's just what's in the know right now. <laughs> I want to learn the Tekkens, too, sometime. I like that Yoshimitsu. I like that <laughs> Lee Fulong. What, I don't know his name. But they do like strange things, and I like doing strange things. It motivates me. <laughs> all right, all right. Bro, well, if you like playing Marvel, I'll be into it. I'll be into the Marvel. I'll Look, man, it. if you ever want to learn Marvel, I'm more than happy to bring you on my stream and teach you. But you said you like strange things. What about, like, Killer Instinct, if you're into more of the one-on-one -on -one situation? Bro, I like Killer Instinct. I haven't played it much, but I like the Raptor. I like the Rash. <laughs> I, can, I can teach you some Rash, dude. That's, yeah, that's, you that's, that's my main. playing Rash, for sure. Like he's, dude, it's time to party. That's, that's what Crash does. He crashes the party. Yo, this is where I want to be. I want to be in there, too. That looks like a blast back there. What are you doing back there? I like to gamble a little bit, but bros, you might be kids watching. Not not promoting gambling. I like to, I like to hit the jackpot sometimes. Now, obviously, we've, we've, we've seen your gameplay before. You like to do the unpredictable. You're very, very hard to read, gentlemen. Do you feel like that's what makes you such a strong player in Among Us? Because I had to play against you, and I had no reads on you in that game. <laughs> Bro, I like Among Us. <laughs> You can walk around, if you're the bad guy, you can be sneaky and kill him. And if you're not the bad guy, you just do a few little things, a little fun little games. <laughs> and then you say, oh, I think it's him. I think it's Vicious. I'm not forgetting <laughs> about Vicious. I know it's you, Vicious. It's always Vicious. <laughs> Look, man, I, I played I played Among Us with Sajam and Vicious and the boys the other day. Vic Jeremy is so aggressive. He's so angry. How do you even quell that? I feel like you you have to be a Hawaiian shirt man to, to take care of somebody like Vicious. <laughs> you can get him. You can get him. You just got to follow him around. Watch him very closely. You can keep an eye on him. You'll know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So I think you're enjoying yourself in the, yeah. in the gambling parlor back there. Uh, what kind of stuff when you play? Uh, do you play when you like to gamble? What's your game? I like playing slots, bro. I go to the nickel slots. I pull them 12 hours in a row. I don't care if I lose. I'm just going to have fun hearing the noise. They're going to bring me some drinks on by. It's going to be a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> so you play slots in exactly the same way that you play Street Fighter is what you're telling me. Over and over and over again. <laughs> it's gambling, gambling the whole... Walk up, DP. Walk up DP. Have you ever thought that maybe you, you party a little too much? Like, maybe you might need some help there, man? It sounds like you might have some issues with overdoing some things. Bro, I have a little budget. I don't get too carried away. <laughs> 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 I, I, I might spend $500 at a time, but then that's right, what I'll right. cut myself off at. They'll give me a free pizza and I'll go home happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that's that, true. What, uh, like, how has it been now? I mean, like, obviously, a lot of people had heard of you before. I, I were, as soon as I saw that you were there, I had to follow you around and record some of the matches and such, like recorded stations and everything. But, you know, how has it been? Like, since then, I feel like you've become such a popular fan of FGC. Your stream is blowing up and everything. What's it like? How has your life changed? Hawaiian shirt man, now that you are an FGC celebrity. Bro, I don't consider myself to be a celebrity. I go on there two, three hours at a time, and I have a good time. People join me, they say hello, they like what they see, and I like doing it. That's how I like it. I don't yeah. care about the fame. I don't want the clouts. i to be major. I'm just doing my thing, having some fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, to kind of build on what you're saying where you don't want the fame and the clout, I was actually uh, in your stream the other day, and I noticed that you said you collect newspapers to give to local pet kennels, like local animal kennels, to make sure the animals have, like, somewhere to sleep on. Because I didn't know this, but I guess that's a problem with kennels. They don't have enough newspaper. Um, I thought that was really, really cool of you just to be that 
charitable is that like the only charitable thing you do not that it's not enough but i mean are there, are there other ways that you you go about your life doing those things bro i i take donations i don't brag about it whenever i get donations on the twitch I send it to my company, they match the donation, they give it to the charity. I love donating to Pets Alive. That's my favorite charity because I love the little dogs. Yeah. I love the little cats. All right, all right. And they always need supplies at those places. They always need donations to keep those little dogs and cats alive. And I love dog bros. I love cat bros. <laughs> Bro, that's not <laughs> the best party I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you have... Any dogs or cats with you? And Bro, I got three dogs. I got two of them from the shelter and one was a stray. I, I, I love my one dog. Bad skin problem. You get some antifungal shampoo. You put that on them. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> I mean, normally, like, I, like, ears have dogs and everything, and I could barely keep up with my dogs. Can your dogs... Keep up with you. Bro, my little Blue, her name's Blue. She she almost knocks me down a lot of times. She scratches me. I got scratches all over my side right now. <laughs> I, I can barely keep up with them. I'm getting a little old, but that's all right. I'm still young at heart, and I can take her. I can take her. But she's going to jump on me, I'm going to hold her back. I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that is that also why you play Zeku so you can launch? Because now you're a V Skill Two user. When they added the animals, how happy were you that they gave Zeku animals? I I love Sakamoto. I love Blasty. I call them that. They're my favorites. I will never not use them. If I don't accidentally pick the wrong one, I feel a little bit lost without them. They mean everything to me. <laughs> I hope they don't nerf them. I hope they make them even better in the winter. Need to be better. Yeah. Speaking of, do you think the uh, the current balance for Street Fighter Five is good, or do you want to see some changes? I think it's pretty nice, bro. But Mr. Gill really needs a buff. Mr. Alex really needs a buff. They need to do it right. They need to do it right. They gotta make her ones a little bit better. <laughs> Give it to them. They need it. <laughs> Where do you think Zeku Yeah, falls? as far as I'm concerned, I, 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 it's out there in the middle of the ocean, for sure. I, this is exactly appropriate. How do you bring him up? Because sometimes I hear people say that Gil is a good character, and you, you right, that he's Gil the worst fine. character in the game. Oh, he's fine. Bro, no! All right, but he can't do much. He needs to have that... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. But I mean, uh, where do you think Zeku stands in terms of the, the balance right now? There's a lot of people who say that Zeku's really strong. We've seen success from like Angry Bird and such. Oh, where do you feel like he stands? Bro, I, I like I like Sam Kelly. I sometimes see him talk and I appreciate his opinion. <laughs> and he says, if you lose with Zeku, it's your own fault. He has all the tools, all the magic he needs to be successful. So as long as you know what you're doing, you try your hardest, you study, you practice, you're going to do all right with Zeku. You'll be a Capcom champion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, buddy, you're, you are living in quite a time out there. It's quite an era that you are living in. You know, there's a deadly virus. It's rampaging. The government doesn't seem to be doing too much about it. Uh, we had a period of then we had a big crash. We are, as a country, embroiled in foreign wars, and there are allegations of works. The president's mind seems to be going. You know, kids are playing video games out there. Adults are watching cop shows. What is your favorite thing about this era that you're living in, the 1980s? Oh. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about politics, bro. I tend to steer clear of all that. I have my own opinions. I'm going to keep them straight to my heart because I don't want to upset no one. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own opinions. I, 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 love, I love the 80s because you just had that nice, nice, swift song. With that, oh, the tallow disco is beautiful. It's all about love, making money, fast cars. <laughs> <laughs> and not to mention, there's loads and loads of cocaine. Uh, I don't know about drugs, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
But you don't know you won't go down that way. Well, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. in, in a theoretical world, if we can get back to going to tournaments and stuff like that, is one of your goals to make it to Capcom Cup. Do you want to be one of the Capcom Cup elites and play at the Capcom uh, finals? Bro, I don't want to just go to the Capcom Cup. I want to win the Capcom ah! Cup! <laughs> be the grand champion! <laughs> Up there with the knuckle, bro. The, the high doms! Uh, bro, I don't, I don't even remember. Uh, the minas! The minas! I want to be them. Immortalized with the little costume. I don't know. I want to. No, I want to try. <laughs> Bro, if you did win, <laughs> costume B. Bro, I think long that one. I'm pretty sure one of these nice shirts is gonna go on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's another question. Uh, if you win Capcom Cup, and let's say you get the two hundred fifty thousand that other players have what would you do with that me bro i'm gonna i'm gonna buy a tesla and build myself a tower in hawaii and i'm gonna live up in the tower it's gonna have fiber optic cables gonna have high speed internet have a bunch of dogs around me I'm gonna do plenty of charity my family and friends will be taken care of bro i might even give something a little to you bro <laughs> <laughs> Would would we be invited right. to your to your tower in Hawaii? Would would we be allowed to show up? Bro, you gotta schedule an appointment. It ain't no bed, bath, and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> but, but bro, I'd love to party with you someday. You're welcome anytime, bro. Look at here, I got grape soda. Soda. That's right, a good great, great ah. soda, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, uh, your Twitch is pretty popular. Uh, what is your Twitch channel? Bro, dress. I think it's Twitch TV. man. I try my best to stream here and there, but I can't. <laughs> what's your what's your schedule so people can come and watch you? Bro, every other night usually I'll do two hours, two hours, and then I gotta go do some other thing night. I ain't gonna say what things, but I gotta do things. <laughs> what do you want to think? You know, don't worry about that. What's we nighttime for you? In which time? Nighttime, bro. I'm from Texas, so it's the Central Central America. No, not Central America. Central Standard Time. <laughs> Central America's a beautiful place. Central America it. time. You're your first, guys. Bro, so, I have hey. a lot of friends in Argentina and Brazil and Chile. <laughs> you definitely do on uh, Capcom Fighters Network. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot for partying with us for a little while. I appreciate it. I hope you have a lot of good things to do in the night tonight. I have a lot of great things to do, but this is one of the best parts of my night. Spending a little time with you, bros. I appreciate you, <laughs> bros. You have a great night. I look forward to seeing you. Hey. Favorite band I love that. that uh, Vincent International. He's an Italo disco singer. He's got Ooh. very nice Italo disco. Okay. <laughs> about what I, that's about what I expected, honestly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well... Thanks for coming on and partying with us, bro. We appreciate it, and uh, maybe we'll have you on again some other time. This is great. Yeah. Bro, I would appreciate that. I love you, bros, and I feel the groove with you, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Yeah, and I will say <laughs> All one right, thing, HSM. Though, I, I, Party I, on, bros! I, I await the time when we can see each other in person again. So. <laughs> Party on, bro! Party on. <sighs> well, that one as, as well as, as I thought it would, so that's cool. Man, what a great answer for his favorite band. I was so happy to hear that. <laughs> All right. I think he, 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 he might even still be there. <laughs> I hope so. That was so HSM great. HSM is always there in our heart. Yeah, Dude, no well, I, let me tell you, I really feel like he has the best gimmick in all of streaming. I mean, he has the best natural personality 
in Damn all it. of streaming. What uh, the heck his he, when you know you you think about people who are streaming like there's people who are doing it like we're doing it. We're like we're just chatting. We're hanging out. There are people who are trying to play games. There are people who have personalities. I feel like his is the best in all of streaming, not just the FGC. So. Congrats I'm, to Hawaiian Shirt Man. He's actually, the greatest. I love watching him. I really have a good time whenever whenever I catch it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I highly recommend that other people check it out as well. I am actually insulted for him that you even threw out the word gimmick out there. He is definitely that way. I think he was born... I mean, he talked about buying the Hawaiian shirts, but I think he came out of the womb with a Hawaiian shirt on and those shades on, and he was already like, Mom, I'm ready to party! And that was all it, so, you know. Hey, good old Hawaiian shirt boy. I mean, sometimes, look, he starts each day as the mature gentleman, and then later on, he can stance change into the younger fella, and so, right. you know, he does have he does have both personalities. He mentioned that even, right? He works for a major corporation during the day, but at night, when he has things to do, and he does the stance change, and he starts partying, that's when he goes on stream, yeah. and it's a blast. And, you know, I mean, in all seriousness, though, I mean, you know, talking about the stuff that he does for the animal charities, and, you know, a lot of people have mentioned this on the in the chat already, but, you know, his stream really is about positivity, right? Like, yeah. everything that he does is about positivity. And, you know, I just, I feel like he is the kind of person that we need more of in, you know, in the community, in any community, I think, who would benefit from having someone like him uh, be a part of their community. And I'm glad he's part of the FGC, honestly. For I sure. think that's great. I definitely agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Cool. Well, thanks again to him for coming on. All right. Let's move on. Please let us know as well. Is the audio still weird or was it just during that one scene? Yeah, is it was it during that interview or is the audio still kind of chugging right now? It is better. It is better. Okay. Yeah, I'm wondering if it might have been the, that, the setting that he had on his uh, on his Discord. Maybe it was like set to one of those like talk with you know the the automatic sensitivity detection kind of things like that. So I mean, the 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 whole thing was stuttering. It wasn't just yeah. It was it was more than that. Was, I, I listened to it for a little bit. It definitely okay, was a little funky. Okay, it was rough. That's weird. Yeah. But it's weird that now that we're back over here, it's fine. Except people are saying well, now that the audio is resources. desynced. Yeah, that is. Okay. Yeah, it's just less resources being used. So. <laughs> It is still stuttering. Well, do you want to take a short break and reset that, or or what? I mean, Maybe that would take, take a too short long. Break, I can just reboot XSplit again and just like we do during breaks and stuff like that. So, sure, yeah, we should okay. do that. All right, then let's do that. All and right, when so. we come back, we'll have five five matchup stuff over the left. Belly all grapplers, viewer questions, and then some other stuff. All right, be right back. All right, here we go, here we go. And we have a guest here on the stream. Oh, hi, Nathan. What's up, Nathan? How's it going, man? All right, we have just had the interview with Hawaiian Shirt Man, and now we're going to move on to the 5-5 five -five matchup segment of the evening. Let's start off by talking about one of our selections, which is, should Belial in GBVS be banned? And then, in general, are DLC characters intentionally overpowered and pay to win? I mean, the Talk to me, Tubo. The, the first part of the question we don't even have listed here because all of us are just going to say no. He no. should not be banned. <laughs> is the answer. Yeah, yeah it, it's pretty obvious. Uh, but do you want to explain Kyle. some of the backstory? Tubo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm going to call him Belial because that's how he should be pronounced. Um yeah. He's been dominating tournaments. I mean, since he came out, he, he's absolutely dominated next level. He's dominated other tournaments. Uh, so some players are just upset, I think, that a DLC character came out, and all of a sudden, within you know two weeks of him being out, players have already, I don't want to say mastered, but they've got a, a grasp on him so much that they can place top eight in, in what are you know big tournaments, essentially, for the game. Uh, so Tempest, in particular... 
uh, as a notable player. He's been winning almost every NLBC. He won a ton of Ronin Rumbles. He's been winning the majority of online events in America uh, with Charlotta. And he tweeted out that he thought Belial should be banned. And pretty much the entire FGC Twitterverse was like, no, you're an idiot. Stop it. Don't. Nowhere close to you're going to be banned. Um, but it was just interesting to see such a strong player call out for something to, you know, for, for a character to, to, to be banned. So there is a lot of, I don't want to say backlash, but a lot of, like, Tempest, calm down, man. You know, we don't need that. We don't need yeah. this guy to be banned. I mean, uh, So then it just kind of uh, transitioned into, well... Uh, is DLC sometimes too strong? Are these companies doing it on purpose? Yeah, well, I mean, the question is, all these people who are doing well with Belial in tournaments now, are these a lot of the same people who have been doing well? Are these a bunch of unknowns that are obviously, like, just coming out of nowhere being carried by the character? You know what I mean? Like, No, no, I don't mean, I don't think there's any unknowns. You know, right. there's no, there's no, like... Joe Schmo, ding ling ding ding dong you know, pagan tournaments, but there are players maybe that necessarily weren't top 8 before getting top 8s, and there's definitely oh. been some upsets with Belial, uh, so that, that definitely comes into factor, it comes into play when people go, you know, this character is too good, because all of a sudden, you know, you were maybe a 17th placer, now you have a chance to make top 8, it's, uh, it's a little fishy. Oh, we never get to see Lyra. But how do you feel about the... DLC in Grand Blue so far in general? Like, have they all been very strong? No, they've for the most part been weak. Yeah. Been pretty, pretty weak. Outside of Jita. Jita was strong. She got nerfed in this patch. Um, but oh. yeah, I mean, Beelzebub was weak. Uh, Zoe is okay. She's not great. I mean, Narmaya wasn't, even, Narmaya wasn't even that great when she came out, right? Nar she Narmaya was, like... was absolutely very weak when she came right. out. Uh, mm -hmm. So, following DLC patterns for Grand Blue has been pretty weak to okay at best character. Sora is another one that was very weak. Um, I mean, but now all of a sudden, Belial comes out. Maybe Arx is overcompensated a bit. Maybe we're like, man, we're tired of our DLC in this game coming out and being trash. Let's make someone who's clearly good. I mean, the, the, the funny thing about it is, though, I mean, you kind of mentioned this last week, too, that with the patch that came out, it feels like they nerfed a lot of the characters, but then Belial just got to keep everything. So it's almost like if he was inserted into the same game as everybody else was earlier, he would have gotten nerfed here as well, kind of like normalized with everybody that maybe they just, because he hadn't been out there yet, they didn't want to nerf anything about him and see how it matches. And now that they see that because he got to keep a lot of the things that everybody else lost that they probably will nerf him or something like that. Yeah, and and I, like to be honest though, like even though everyone the majority of the cast got weaker, I still think Belial probably would have been arguably top 5. Like I don't Okay, okay. He for sure would have been good before too. Uh yeah. he's not really missing much. He has set play, he has overhead low mix-ups. He has he has pretty much everything, man. So it's hard to it's hard to say that he wouldn't have been in that argument before as well. But yeah, when you nerf all the top tiers and don't really replace any of the good stuff they had, and then you insert that character into the game, of course he's going to feel good. Of course he's going to feel like, duh, this is the best character now. But for the broader question of are DLC characters intentionally overpowered and pay to win, what would you say before like I say whether I agree or disagree with it, what's your evidence for whether this may be the case? So... Let me just let me answer quick just by saying I absolutely believe that DLC characters are intentionally overpowered and paid to win when they're good, but when they're bad, they're definitely not. So <laughs> In other words, All right. in other words, no, it doesn't happen because everybody only complains about that when a DLC character comes out and they're super good when there's so much history of DLC characters coming out and being bad. <laughs> Nobody ever talks about it then. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like the logical thing is that no, that, that obviously not. The characters are not being made for pay to win of you... Think of in the past, yes, there are some characters that's it's like, wow, that character probably needed a little bit more dev time. Some more, some more testing. Um, I mean, recently you think of Leroy or Fakuram and Tekken 
Um, but even more previously, if you look at like the history of NRS games, um, Tanya and MKX was way too good. Uh, there's the famous story of uh, Ed Boon sitting next to Katana Prime at CEO that year, literally making phone calls yelling that the character's too good because there was like <laughs> seven out of eight top eight characters were like all oh, Tanya teleporting everywhere. There were um, six. <laughs> oh, was it six? Okay, there we go. God, stop uh, exaggerating, then, Brandon. God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, forgive me. Uh, and then you think about, like, you know, Alien or characters Pre- like Predator. that. Like, yeah, there has been a history of these characters happening. Yun and Yang in Street Fighter Four. However, I think you're right, James. There's so many more examples of DLC characters being absolute shit. To where you can't argue mm. that DLC is being made overpowered on purpose so people try to pay to win. There, there's no way you could logically make that argument. The truth is that they're all over the place. Sometimes yeah. DLC characters come out and they're very strong, and sometimes they come out and they're very weak, and sometimes they come out and they're right in the middle. Which is exactly how it is for characters who aren't DLC as well. Right? Characters just sort of span the good to not good. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, I don't see any pattern. The only pattern that I see is that when we have these when we have these sort of callbacks in our memory to what are the DLC that were too good that even make us think about this in the first place. They are the ones that you mentioned, which are Tanya and Alien in 2016, 2015, whatever year that was. Long time ago now. And Yun and Yang in Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, which was... 2011. 2011. And they weren't, yeah, they weren't even DLC, time. right? We had to buy a whole new game for that. Well, I mean, okay, okay, okay but it's the DLC. same concept, yeah. yeah. Well, and the thing about Pokonoe is- in, in Blaze Blue, that was, you know, around the same era. These are mostly old ones. And every now and then, a character comes out, and it's like, wow, this character is, like, very strong. Just like Alien and Tanya and Yun and Yang from 100 years ago. And in between, even in those games, even in MKX, like, Launch Jason was not good. Right. Uh, in Street Fighter Four. When they added new characters, some of them were quite weak at launch, and they, you know, got buffed over the time. But uh, that was the case for many of the like new DLC characters that they were not all good right at, right off the bat. Right. Some of them were bad. I mean, so in each case, even when we recall that a character was really strong, it's like mixed in with characters that were not. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure why this yeah. belief persists. That DLC I is mean, intentionally overpowered because it's definitely not. Can, There's just I no evidence. I can tell for you it. why. It's just okay. grubby casuals that are wanting to cry. Oh, these DLC are too powerful because they want us to pay money. Like it's the same people that you know complain about game dev cycles and things like that when games get delayed. Like just. Just realistically, it's just idiots. <laughs> like, there's okay. there's no better way to put it. There, you're just you're just being a whiny baby, and there's no there's no realism behind your complaint. Like in all the games that I play nowadays, when there have been DLC, they mostly been like fine. You know, like not nobody would say are any maybe Joker in MK11 is probably one of the best characters, and he's the DLC. But I wouldn't even say that he's clearly number one a lot of people don't think he's number one everybody thinks he's top tier but nobody's like out there trying to ban joker and at the same time robocop came out and people are like this is the worst character in the game and in between there's all sorts of characters who are mid or whatever and it's the same for street fighter and it's i imagine the same for all the other games you were just talking about how in grand blue it's like that maybe this new character is super good but before that they were not And same in Dragon Ball, some of them have come out and they're like, super good. And some come out and they're like, I haven't seen this character in the last year and a half. And that's, it's just, there's no pattern that signifies anything like DLC characters being intentionally overpowered or pay to win. Yeah. Busted. All right. Topic destroyed by Ultra David. Point here. I mean, one thing though. I mean, just just to kind of clarify on that previous topic, though, I mean, I can't remember now, when it went up to Arcade, when it went into Arcade Edition, could you fight Yun and Yang online if you didn't upgrade? Well, so Arcade Edition came out, and then AE 2012 was a free upgrade. Right, right. But I mean, that was the whole thing, is like, DLC being paid upgrade is more of, like, paid to win is more because you have to end up fighting them, right? Like, going to a different version of the game is not quite the same thing, uh, in my opinion. Well, the reason that Yun and Yang were so... 
overpowered is that the producer of the game thought it would be a great idea right. yeah, yeah, yeah. to that intentionally was, describe yeah. their balance as being mm -hmm. like a sphere and if everything is well balanced then it's a boring one but right. if there's like cool mountains on there then you're like whoa check it out very interesting so there was just a moron in charge in that case right yep at that time at but that yeah time. i mean i mean even even if you don't want to if you want to say that different versions of street fighter 4 don't count as dlc which i would argue they absolutely do because it was a different time yeah I agree. um you can you can think about like ui goku and gt goku in dragon ball fighters or leroy and Fakuram and, and Tekken, like they're, they're, it's the same argument, you know. Totally, yeah. And at the same time, there's plenty of characters who are not good or are just in the middle. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, for for every GT Goku, there's a Android 18 at 17, one of the teens. <laughs> I got to mix in my brain right now, but yeah, you know, not all DLC is good. Like Videl's a character, right? I haven't. Does anybody? Videl Videl is a character now, but man, she wasn't yeah. for like two years. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, that's who I was thinking of, and I was like, I haven't seen you since you came out. Yep. Um, all right. Anyway, this is not real. Want to move on to the next one? <laughs> sure. Sure. All right. Very good. Let's talk about something that is absolutely real. Are grapplers actually the real footsies characters? Now, this depends a lot on which game we're talking about. Is Tager a footsies character? Like, no. He's just a weirdo. But when it comes to more traditional grounded characters a zangief a daimon uh a uh, bane that kind of stuff aren't in fact these the real footsies characters and the reason that i say that is that they tend to be designed in ways where their grabs are very strong but they don't have things that immediately lead into pressure some of them do right i mean there's any number of different ways to do these things but when it comes to these sort of grounded characters in grounded games, a Zangief has a nice range SPD, and if he lands the close one, he gets to snowball. Other than that, his buttons don't lead to knockdowns, and they mostly have not led to knockdowns. SF4 is the only version where that he really has had that, and that took bar, Street and Fighter in general, 2. he wasn't even doing that anyway. Street Fighter 2, um, he had sweep. <laughs> Okay, he had sweep, but he. But what I mean to say is that he could get knockdowns, but he couldn't immediately turn it into pressure right, unless he yeah, already yeah. had mm -hmm. like a corner situation. Um, so the focus, as a result, for a grappler player under those circumstances, is that they spend more time at footsie's range than other characters do, who can get knockdowns into immediate pressure. So characters who immediately can convert from mid-range footsies to pressure. Are those really footsies characters? I'm not sure. I think instead, the characters that are footsies characters are the characters who spend more time there, which is Zangief-type grapplers. James, thoughts? I mean, I still think Hyper Fighting and ST Zangief are two of the most fundamental footsies-based characters in existence. I think uh, when I play Zangief in Hyper Fighting, I am playing more footsies with Zangief than I am with any other character uh, in like any fighting game that I've ever played. So actually, I really do think I agree. I really do think grapplers are super right. super footsies intensive. <sighs> I feel like uh, the amount of work that you have to put in to get around other people's normals with a grappler, you have to understand the fear of putting into i mean basically a grappler has no real threat when they're walking up to you and the fact that you can actually beat them in neutral is purely through footsies and through fundamental play and through mm -hmm. strong neutral p play so both of you 100 both of you and i think i can't believe I think, what i'm hearing i think this right is now. i think this is part of why many of the smartest people in the fgc are grapplers players. Yeah. So I'm thinking of uh, top commentators in the past, uh, people who have won Evo in the past uh, in multiple different games have been grapplers players, or at least started out there and then sort of changed. Um, I think that's not a mistake because grappler players have to be thinking a lot about that mid range. Grapplers players have, have to, be, to be thinking? They have to be thinking constantly. <laughs> they have to be, what are they thinking, David? That's all they're fucking thinking. There's no thinking. Have you seen Laura? 
Have you seen Makoto? I can't believe I sat here and listened to this nonsense for that long. I'm so, I'm actually heated. What are we talking about here? Saying Eve the Footsie Master? You mean fucking Green Hand, Hyper Focus, whatever, Red Focus, Into Death? That's the Footsie Master? This is just nonsense from two grappler players. From a hyper fighting grappler player and a everything grappler player. What are you guys even talking about? Alright, cool it, Nemo. Look. <laughs> Just because you are frustrated at the fact that your footsies aren't good enough to keep up with grappler players and their footsies doesn't mean that you need to take it out on the entire archetype. I recommend instead trying to get good. I just... I, Look, I, with grapplers, everyone what? complains about grapplers and stuff. When is the last time a grappler has really been the best character in a game, right? That's the thing. Abigail! At, at the highest level. Abigail! At yeah, the... and they instantly swatted him down. They did a mid-season patch, which they almost never do because they couldn't allow Grappler to be strong. Right, and yet, thing. and what? yet, still players got super far with Abigail that year. Somebody got two grand finals at Capcom Cup with that. One of the smartest players of all time, Itazan. People still do it with Grapplers, even though they are almost never the best. Right, and here's the thing, right? They almost never win tournaments. Like, when's the last time Laura you've just seen a won Grappler Capcom Cup. win tournaments, right? But that just shows you right there, you know, how much, if you're good, you can prevent Grapplers from winning. If you're not good, then the Grapplers are going to dominate, and you're going to think that they don't have to think. But honestly, Did we forget like about Iodom winning Capcom Cup? When yeah, played... Iodom is a character that... Even Capcom didn't think was good enough, so it buffed Laura. Idom is the genius there. And Capcom, Capcom is the golden grail of fucking is, balance is now. One yeah, of right. The best characters in the game right now. I don't think people would even argue Poison is one of the best characters right now. Idom yeah. is a genius, so he's For gonna sure. win because he applied that genius to a grappler character. Sure, but. For the most part, grapplers do generally not very well at tournaments because they require so much work and thought that yeah. most players, when they use them, they don't stick with them because it's just too much work. That's I'm right. Yeah, I mean, I can only right think now. of a couple of people who did well with grapplers in, say, like a like a Marvel vs. Capcom. Theory. How about how about we go way back? Let's go way back. Let's go way back to a year called 2010. Okay. When there is a game being played, actually 2008 is probably the earliest the game being played called Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo High Def Remix or whatever that was called. HDR. I don't know that one. Yeah, well, I do. It was made by the genius developer David Serlin. And you know what he did? He made Zangief the best character in that game by far. And you know who won Evo twice? Zangief. And not to say that Snake Eyes isn't an incredible player. He is. That, when you give that was when you give once. Zangief that was only once, a too. running bear grab. I oh, know he won it twice, didn't he? No, the HDR was only there one year. I could have swore he won it twice. Maybe he won the side tournament. Yeah, it might have been a side tournament. Either way. When you give is Geef, when you guys are just talking about all these footsies that, that uh the grapplers have, right? Mm -hmm. In that game, Geef just runs halfway across the screen in like thirteen frames. What footsies are you guys talking about? Well, that's because by then, he didn't become a grappler. He won by just being a, a slot machine, and any character could have won with those set of tools without the SPD anyway. So that wasn't Zangief's fault. That was just a poorly designed Zangief. So I, fe I feel like I give you guys a, a perfect example of why grapplers aren't always the footsie character. I'm not saying that they can't be. I'm not saying that they can't be footsie characters. I'm just saying, more often than not, when you see a successful grappler, it's because they're stupid. Think about like how Hagar in Marvel Three plays footsies more than almost any other character. Like he, his, the way that he moves around with pipe in the air, jump pipe, that kind of stuff. That is Zangief stand medium punch. Like that is, for sure, the same button. Playing footsies with that character is very interesting. I mean, it's it's hard to move forward. You have to be really precise with your movements back and forth. Uh, hard to do. If I'm not mistaken, isn't Hagger the most played character in top eight of Evo all time? Not on point. <laughs> well, yeah, we're talking about, we're talking about Grappler Hagar. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Lariat assist is super useful. As a as a point character, it's a different story. Uh, I I don't think it is very much. I mean, as look, a point character, well, it's a different story. You, you you can throw out you can throw out Lariat anytime you want. You can cancel any normal into Lariat. 
What do you what what footsies are there? Oh, Hagar whiff punish. Now I hit a button. Oh, there he goes lariating again. And if if he whiffs lariat, guess what? He has another special that's completely invincible that follows up behind it. He gets two chances for one bar anytime he wants to just be completely invincible. There's no footsies with that character. As you a can't whiff punish it's him. It's a very different story. Oh my goodness, David, stop it. I mean, I'll I'm say so this. Upset. I'll just say this one thing is that. Um, I mean, all trolling aside and everything like that, when I do play Zangief in Super Turbo or when I do play Zangief in Hyper Fighting, I feel like I have to work and think so much harder. And it's it's actually one of the most joyous ways to play fighting games because you have to work so hard on the mental aspect of the game. So I, I really honestly, like just from the Zangief perspective of Street Fighter 2, I really feel like he's such a footsies character. And he definitely is, yeah. And and that's not even to say the same... You're not saying that Zangief's bad in hyperfighting. He's not bad. He's, oh, he's bad. He's terrible in hyperfighting. He's one of the worst characters in the game because... Yeah, but that's... but that, Right, I mean, in the context of that game, but it's quite a well-balanced game. Um, mm. he, he... <laughs> Zangief, I mean, he yeah. dies to Sagat and Blanca basically for free, right? I mean, those characters basically murder Zangief. But and he's those... got fine matchups versus a lot of characters, and he's not the worst character okay. in the game. In, instead, what you're talking about is how he has such a footsies focus gameplay. Because I do think he has more footsies focus yeah. gameplay than almost uh, anybody in uh. that game. Um, that side is super satisfying. And I agree with you. I feel the same way in, you know, when I was playing uh, Street Fighter V Zangief, if I'm playing Daimon in KOF 13, uh, if I'm playing Hagar in Marvel 3, you know, if I'm playing Bane in Injustice 1. Uh, who, you know, who, as you guys are aware, um, just a, a character with only really footsies, really very weak when it came to pressure itself. He really had to work hard to get into a certain spot, as you know, you guys are, as you guys know. Um, so playing that kind of character took a lot of, just a lot of mental fortitude to sort of, you didn't have, you have a very short range dash, you know, he didn't do much damage. That kind of character was very, very fun to play, very footsies focused. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel that Bane in Injustice One is one of the best examples of exactly what I'm talking about here. I know, I know, you guys both agree. There's no need to. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I honestly, I just don't know enough about Bane and Injustice One <laughs> to argue with you. Well, I just, I, described, I just have to take your your word for it. I describe Bane exactly perfectly. I, I honestly don't believe you. I, I think you're being a filthy liar right now. He's probably what? very much a probably very much a one touch into full snowball character, is what I would imagine. Uh, knowing how, your how type of characters you? that you play. What I do not, I play footsies characters. Do, but do other people, you? But other people who lose to my footsies and then now have to take a mix-up, which is reasonable, <laughs> they get mad. They think they think what kills them is the last mix-up that I did. That's not right. What they lost in instead is the footsies phase, and so they can't think back in time. One thing that I've often found is that people who aren't grapplers players don't have the capability to sort of have this full encapsulation of, of how a fighting game works and all the different phases yeah, in it. Yeah, totally. um, right, so they view their most recent like reason that they got hit as being why they lost. That's not true. That's not true. What instead caused them to lose was to be put into the bad situation in the first place. And yeah, no, so if totally you lose to my footsies, yeah. you, should be, you should be in a bad situation. If, if, if we're playing footsies by high fight, and you hit me once and I lose that round, yeah, that makes sense, because that's how that game is played. However, if we're playing footsies in Street Fighter, and you out-footsie me one time with one poke, and I die because of it, that's no, no, no. That's not footsies. No, dude, grapplers need to hit the opponents more, typically. That's typically <laughs> true. It's not categorically true, but typically true. Uh, for example, in Street Fighter, in Street Fighter V, maybe, let's say, Geef, the most damage he can do at any one time, unless he already has trigger, is like 250 it's not. It's not a lot, and that's that's true for both fierce SPD, or yeah, even the X running bear grab, or just a hit confirm combo. Whereas other characters are out there doing 400 damage on non V trigger combos. So Geef actually has to hit more often, which means that if you lose to him, you know I understand why people get upset at losing to a character like Zangief because for them to have done so means that they need to get outplayed, not just in footsies, but then in the mix-ups as well. Yeah, I mean... Which, look, which may be tough mentally, I guess. I don't know. The best way... Honestly, the hardest thing about grapplers is the mental aspect of fighting against grapplers. It's just like zoners. 
it's the same thing. When you lose to it, it doesn't feel like that they have to do any work. It, it just doesn't, right? And it's one of the reasons why that myself and Keats and Seth Killian have all argued that grapplers and zoners cannot be top tier in a fighting game. They are the characters that make other people quit. When you play zoners and when you play grapplers on your own and you think it's just let me just toss stuff on the screen or let me just grab you all day, you actually find out that it's super hard. So yeah, maybe grapplers can hit, can, like Zangief gets in one EX SPD and he gets to kill you, right? But that's because you spent 70% of the round walking in the fierces and stuff like that all day. The risk reward ratio is actually precisely tuned to for that. I mean, that's, that's he basically... He doesn't need to kill you on EX SPD. Right now, he needs to mix you up four more yeah. times. And, and honestly, I mean... That's, it's tough. It's tough out there. It's, it's, it's one of the hardest things. Like, grapplers, you can't defend against them because blot, you can't tech it. And so there just doesn't feel like there's an answer to SPD. So that makes you feel frustrated and terrible. And then zoners, you can't get in on them. That makes you feel frustrated and terrible. It's just what makes those characters psychologically damaging because what you normally want to do doesn't work. And uh, this whole debate here and the reason why you have people like Sharpie and like uh, Justin who hate grapplers to death, you know, and uh, it's just, and you see how people react to zoners. It's just kind of an indication of how much both of those characters are so psychologically powerful and why, you know, from a objective or at least as much of an objective point I can make, uh, I do believe that both of them are some of the most footsie, fundamental, and intelligent kind of characters to be played. Because if you can't frustrate your opponent as a zoner, or if you can't get in on the opponent as a grappler, you have not done your job psychologically to be able to defeat them. And they require that so much compared to a lot of other characters in fighting games, in my opinion. That's... How I feel. That sounds objective to me. I, I feel like psychologically, I'm just being absolutely destroyed right now. Like I can't. <laughs> I feel that James, way James is being logical. James is being logical, at least a little bit. David, all the way over there, is just, just poop, just, just shit, just bleh, out of your mouth with everything you said. Just when there's characters, when, there, when there's characters like Abel. When there's characters like Laura, Makoto, Abigail, like, we can go down the list. I, Tager? Tager and BB Tag? You're going to tell said, me that he's fair? I even said Tager's kind of a different beast. Like, yeah, come on, man. Come, the, the, character. Yeah. So I'm not saying the grapplers can't be footsie-based. I'm not saying that they can't be. I'm saying, generally speaking, they are not footsie-based. They, they, they aren't. Well, that doesn't sound like it's very objective. No, no, this is definitely my, my, my opinion. Oh, well, I'm glad you admit that it's not real. But, but what you're saying is definitely your opinion as well. Your, your, your argument is not objective. Well, I don't know why you'd say that. Uh, I just told you because you're full of shit. It's just <laughs> overflowing coming out of your mouth at this point. It's ridiculous. In Injustice 1, Bane had a safe armored overhead. And so you could do a meaty safe armored overhead that looped back into itself. Oh, Although yeah. he also had lows that you could start from as well. And for some reason in Injustice 1, if you do a meaty attack and then cancel it into an armored special and the opponent does a wake-up attack, you actually absorb with your armor, even though you're putting a non-armored normal button as a meaty into them. And so you got a... Honestly, one of the stupidest mix-ups of all time. So what one you're saying is, I had the I had the read on you with your bait. I've never no even seen this character played. I played Injustice for like two weeks, and I knew I just knew Ultra David so well that he was just full of crap with the Bane call on footsies. Get out of here with that! But I knew. At the, same time, the at the same time, Bane has Ryu crouching medium kick, which means that he does actually have really important footsies. But he also snowballs, like he's. He's maybe the jerkiest character I've ever played in Justice One Bane. I'm not sure I've ever played a jerkier character than that. But he also has Ryu crouching medium. <sighs> Heads up. So yeah, he has footsies and the mix. He has, he has it all. Yeah, he would have been top tier if there weren't maybe like the best zonering characters that have ever existed in a sure. major fighting game. So Anyway, thanks a lot for agreeing with me, Tubo. I agree. Uh, uh, I, I appreciate agree that. 
you have agreed with me on this, I'm and I know I know you have a spite from now on. I know, I know, I know. Can't wait to but see what the next five I'm, five matchup questions are going to be. I'm <laughs> glad that you uh, that you have given into this for sure. All right, I guess that's it for this topic. It sounds like Tubo doesn't have anything else to say. Sure don't. Cool. All right, let's talk about the viewer five five matchup questions, shall we? Definitely. What do we got, David? What do we got for those? All right, let's start uh, reading them here. Number one, what are your most and least favorite fighting game mechanics? Number two, how have the skills required to be a competitive player changed from Street Fighter 4 to Street Fighter 5? Which of these are due to in-game differences versus meta differences, e.g. tech videos and match footage, more widely available? Three, what do you think about FGC content creators branching out to various games like Fall Guys, Among Us, and other popular streaming games? Will it bring more viewers to the FGC, or will viewer numbers slash money tempt FGC people to stream less fighting games in the future? And number four, we have four today. With the release of King of Fighters 2002 UM, which is widely viewed as the best King of Fighters game, having rollback netcode, should it see more play than Tekken, Dragon Ball Fighters, and Street Fighter V? Or do people really not care about rollback netcode unless it's included in the big three games? And the winner is number two. How have the skills required to be a competitive player changed from SF4 to SF5? Which of these are due to in-game questions versus meta differences? Well, in -game what do you all think? In-game mechanics, right? In-game differences versus meta oh, differences. Okay. differences, differences. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, I mean, I... <laughs> uh, poor Tubo. Uh, <laughs> basically, uh, honestly, I mean, actually, to be fair, I probably have a pretty unique take on this as well is that I do, I mean, I've talked about this a lot recently. I feel like that there's a big difference between heart games and mind games and, and, and body games, you know, for the three different aspects of a player. Uh, I do feel like Street Fighter Four was definitely more of an emotion, heart kind of game, and Street Fighter Five is definitely more of a mind, science kind of knowledge kind of game. Uh, so I do feel like the skill set has changed a lot and why uh, we don't see some of the players who dominated Street Fighter V still dominate in Street Fighter... Uh, I'm sorry, who dominated in Street Fighter IV still dominate in Street Fighter V. It's why I don't think, for example, like Justin, until he got a character which he could play with heart in Monat, uh, you know, didn't see as much success in Street Fighter V. I just don't think the game was suited for him. Uh, I do, again, recognize that once you get past that mind portion of it, you get to the heart eventually, but there is that barrier there. So I do feel like that's kind of uh, uh, a difference. So I feel like you have to change your mindset a lot. If you are a pure Street Fighter Four player... Uh, and love everything about Street Fighter 4, your success in Street Fighter 5 <laughs> is going to be a lot more difficult unless you change your mindset, uh, uh, in my opinion. And again, the top players are going to be good enough that they can transfer over because they know they have to adapt. But uh, I still honestly do think it takes two very different sets of skills because once you get, once you understand it, they become the same kind of heart game. They become the same kind of heart game, but there's a little bit more of the science and labbing and mind kind of stuff as a barrier in five than it more is in four. So uh, that's that's how I feel about it. So, uh, so I mean, personally, I think that Street Fighter Four overall is a much harder game to be good at than Street Fighter Five. I mean, all I have to really say is one frame links. Street Fighter V was designed with new players in mind, so almost all your beginner combos are medium, medium, special, or medium, medium, EX special. It's um, changed now. I mean, there's characters like Minot or Guile that do require a little bit more execution if you want to play them at a high level. However, if you want to do some optimal shit with Ryu, there's like a micro step in there maybe. There's the execution overall itself, is extremely simple. Um, again, there are characters like Guile, Sagat, etc. that 
take a little bit of execution to really play at a high level, but the the execution goes along with the mind games you're talking about. The execution goes along with playing with your heart. Um, a lot of times you'll see players not necessarily go for the hardest, most optimal combo in Street Fighter 4 because it was too hard. So they would leave, you know, 10 damage, 9 damage, 15 damage on the table, and it can end up costing them the match. Whereas in Street Fighter V, you're always doing the optimal shit just because you can. Why not? It's it's there. I do a roundhouse, and I hit V-trigger, and then I go into my V-trigger shit, and I'm good to go. It's just, it's, I, I feel like 4 was a much harder game. Actually, doing V-trigger cancel combos mid-combo ends up being really bad for damage proration in Street Fighter V. But that's usually not true. Whereas in Street Fighter 4, although there were some characters, as there have been in every fighting game, including 5, that required execution, if you wanted to, you could play Sakura and do hard stuff. Most characters were not doing that, right? Most characters had 2 and 3 frame links. Many characters... How many characters had Crouching Short, Crouching Short special? I feel like that was half cast, at least. Um, it was always, that, remember, it was always... Light, light, link, light in the special. <laughs> yeah, light, light, link, light, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, I, I really feel like the execution difference gets overplayed. It's true that one frame links existed in Street Fighter 4 more than in Street Fighter 5. Um, Honda effectively has one frame links because you need to start doing the timing for hands with the right timing, and if you're a frame off, the hand will, the normal will come out rather than the hand, which is just maybe it's unique for Honda, but. There, there are some of those, certainly in juggles for some characters, too. Um, like in, in previous Street Fighter games, in many fighting games, there are characters who have hard execution. You could play Viper in Marvel 3, but like you could also play Hagar. You know, you could, there's, this, is, this is the case in, in general, and I think that when people are looking back on Street Fighter 4, they tend to think about what the hard combos were, rather than realizing that most of them were actually not hard. Um, that but what sticks out in your mind is the hard stuff. So execution, a little bit different, but not very different. I would say what stands out to me between Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5 is that SF5 has a lot more varied situations um, for a couple of the reasons. One is that in Street Fighter 4, you could boil things down too much um, to just a few defensive situations or not even having a defensive situation. Uh, maybe you could have a one-frame block if it came to be a... Um, an unblockable setup, right? There was really not much to be said in those situations for, for many players, for many characters as well. Whereas in SF5, that stuff doesn't exist, and so you instead have to have a lot of different uh, back and forths with trying to take advantage in situations, because you don't have turn stealing moves for the most part. If you, if you do, they take bar and they're extremely punishable. Um, so mostly you are not stealing turns that way. You have to invent other ways to steal turns that kind of stuff could have happened in SF4, but things like Dragon Punch FADC were much more powerful. Focus Backdash was much more powerful. Invincible Backdash was much more powerful. And so you, like, ignore... you With your obvious turn stealers, you ignore lots of really interesting strategy that could have been there that ends up never actually mattering. I, I like that you paired this game, Tree Fighter 4 being this game, uh, having not many interesting options, and then you just name off like four interesting options back to back to back to back. No, those are that just made the game. Those are not made the game fun to play, and it made the flow of the game fun. But we're not we're not arguing what's those what's are ways to just get out of there. Those, those, those are ways to vitiate the interesting strategic mind that could happen. Instead, you just have something super powerful and you use it to escape. Whereas in SF five, you can't do that. And in SF five with V trigger, you have two phases to the round for most characters. Um, and the difference between non-V-Trigger and V-Trigger can be really stark, and so that adds another layer that you don't have in SF4 of having to game plan around how to deal with that, about um, trying to manage resources so that you can be there in the same way for Phase 2, for the, the V-Trigger phase. Uh, and in SF4, it's just kind of the same thing the whole round. Um, so I would say those seem to me like two of the biggest differences, and then the third biggest difference I would say is that the footsies are just way more interesting. In Street Fighter 4, footsies were a big deal, don't get me wrong, but many of the best footsies characters were single-button or two-button characters. Able, step kick, or Adon, stand roundhouse, or Bison, stand medium kick. And so you had one thing or two things that you could do in footsies, and that really like 
boils down the footsies game to a much less intriguing options of, of buttons versus not just distances but also like heights which is a really big deal in street fighter 5 and and frame data and different timings and different options and sf5 footsies are really dense they have uh lots of different buttons per characters almost every character has at least three or four different tools that they need to be using all the time whereas in sf5 you didn't so in sf5 you could boil it down to these situations of you just have a one button that you're looking for or on offense or defense, there's just like a couple really strong things that you're looking for. And you don't have to play these extra mind games. So anyway, Street Fighter V players have better footsies, better fundamentals, and better mix-ups. So I, I don't know if that ne I necessarily agree with that part. I mean, I think it's pretty equal on, on both sides, really. Um, like Street Fighter Four, I will always give it because I think it has better character variety. Uh, Street Fighter V, I think has actually gotten to the point where it's come closer. It's definitely a lot better now. But uh, Street Fighter Four still has more in terms of rewarding the different kinds of play style, like I've talked about. You know, Brant Tubo's talking about the, the one-frame links and stuff. That's the body aspect of the game. You know, like I said, heart, body, and mind. Uh, they, Street Fighter Five, yeah, the execution is not very hard, right? You don't, there's not very many tough things that you have to do in that game, uh, execution wise, uh, and that's definitely a, a, a problem. Although, like, like we said, there is a monot in there and such that does feed the execution junkies out there. Yeah, uh, Manat, Urian, Guile, Honda. There's a lot of Dawson. There's a lot of characters now that have that. I'm just sitting focus. here thinking this guy really said Crush Counter 5 players have better footsies than Street Fighter 4 players. Yeah. That's just insanely wrong. Yeah, can you not plan around having a different button to take advantage of? That's, does that feel tough if you can't just press forward medium kick? Or, yeah, can I guess, would do the same thing? That's, if that's, that's, that's what, that's what we're that talking hard? about, David. That's, that's literally what we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about Yuri and just doing this over and over again. We're talking about but not throwing this shit out over and over again. You're, you're, you're naming your own game right now. You're trying to say it's Street Fighter 4, but you're, you're talking about 5. Each of those characters has at least three or four really important tools. There's nobody in Street Fighter 5 that gets away with the kinds of limited footsies games that existed in Street Fighter 4. Look, in Street Fighter 4, when characters didn't have one or two really strong footsies options, they weren't strong. Because that, so, that was so important in that game. So here's the thing. Uh, I like I said, I'm kind of weirdly in the middle of this whole entire thing because I, I do agree that in Street Fighter uh, Five that the footsies are really really interesting in that game. Uh, but the the thing that I don't like about it is that I feel like the footsies are a little bit more close ranged. And again, this comes to me again with the notion that I feel like I really really want to have. Uh, uh, proximity normals again. Uh, I do. I don't like the fact that Street Fighter V's footsies are really stubby. Now, of course, since almost everybody's stubby, it kind of works out in a little bit of way. But I would have liked to seen a bigger variety of distances when it came to normals. Again, why is Manat one of my favorite characters? Is because she throws most of that on its head. Manat is like the most non Street Fighter V character in Street Fighter V, which is why she was always one of my uh, favorite characters. Uh, but I just like the fact that in Street Fighter 4, a lot of people's footsies were really weird. Like Viper's footsies was, I can air burn kick you from half a screen away, you know, or, you know, Dalsum was actually kind of a better zoner in Street Fighter 4. I just feel like the character variety was a little bit stronger in terms of what the character's goals were. Uh, I do feel like Street Fighter 5 is dominated a little too much by the Street Fighter RPS, the throw shimmy attack game. However, uh, it's been better in Season 5 more than any other season. In Season 1, it was terrible. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's gotten better over time. But in terms of game plan and variety, I do think 4 has a... I mean, this has kind of devolved into a comparing 4 and 5 kind of thing instead of what skills are necessary. But uh, like I said, I see them as two very different games. I honestly see them as two very different games, and it doesn't shock me 
that mo a lot of players who like four dislike five and a lot of players who like five dislike four, which goes to my point that they are very different games, that one is more heart and body and then one is more mind. Like that, I see them as very different games and that is a good thing. I have always been a fan of the fact that Street Fighter changes what the game is from game to game. That 3 series is not anything like 4, which is not anything like 5. But I, I do think that it's important to acknowledge that 5 and 4, when people try to compare them, it's not really fair because they're two very, very different games. And uh, while I personally think that I enjoy 5 more than I enjoyed 4... There's still a lot of things about 4 that I do miss a lot, such as the character variety, such as the execution. Not saying that hard execution is better. Uh, it depends on who you are, again, if you're a bot better. or not. But I prefer it. I like it. But, you know, uh, I really... I think it's important to establish that they are very different games and the, the skill set required to be good at one is very different than the other. And depending on where you lean is where the whole opinion of which game is better is going to take precedence. So, Look, man, these, these, these 2016 ers they couldn't hang with us 09ers. They still can't hang with us 09ers, <laughs> all right? We got we got all the OGs are still winning tournaments. So the OGs, yeah, yeah the OGs. We're all, what? Are, what, are you, what are you like an O five? Are you around no, you're right, for you're four right. years? Yeah, oh, you're right. No, yeah, I'm an O two or actually, but but oh, you're right. right. I mean, they, they they definitely are old school at this point. Look, I prefer SF five. I know, but my my honest answer is as far as how the skills changed is I actually feel like they're very similar. Like the skill set that you need, the games are different, but I feel like the skill sets that you need are extremely similar. This isn't the difference between Street Fighter Four and Marvel or 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 Blaze Blue or some or Smash. I mean, this is not like a it's not a very different. It's a Street Fighter game for sure, and each Street Fighter game is different, but it's definitely still like grounded 2D, looking for anti airs. You have a few options on the ground, right? You have pressure. Maybe you have an invincible tool, but some characters don't. Like, there's a lot of overlap, I feel. And whether you like the game or not, I mean, that's a different question, obviously. But the skill set to be good at it is, I feel, super similar. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see why it would be so substantially different. Um, the people who are playing Street Fighter V at a high level, people who are playing any game at a high level have good execution. Whether the links are there or not, if, if you are going to play in a high level situation, you need to be able to to execute your character's inputs and movements really precisely. And that's true whether the links are one frame or two frames. Your, your movement needs to be super crispy. Your anti airs need to be really crispy. All that stuff, like the execution at a high level from a skill set perspective is, I feel, very similar. And the idea of playing footsies, again, one game I feel requires more, but uh, more sort of uh, buttons, I should say. But from a mindset perspective, from the skill set perspective, I feel like it's very similar in terms of trying to bait somebody and trying to whiff punish somebody. Those are very similar. Um, as far as the mix-ups that are up close, yeah, they're different. Like, one has Crouch Tech, and one doesn't, and one has Dragon Punch FADC, and one doesn't. Like, those are different things. But the idea of the throw or the hit, rather than, as other games are, wild cross-up or overheads being extremely important, right? That's Those are things that neither game in Street Fighter Four or Street Fighter Five really has. So I feel like the skill sets actually are quite similar. I mean, let, let's put it this way. I definitely agree, though, that Street Fighter V has footsies more similar to Third Strike, so I can see how you like yeah. both of those. A lot of whiff punishing. Street Fighter IV had footsies that are similar to Street Fighter II because when I was using Kami, tell me how often I wasn't using Crouching Medium Kick with Kami <laughs> for poking. <laughs> yeah. Right? So to me, there's still a level of footsies even with using the single button like that, you know? Uh, I mean, of course, yeah. There, of course there are footsies. Yeah, I'm... I am, I am, of course, biased, right? I'm coming from my Third Strike is my favorite game. Yeah. I absolutely agree that Street Fighter V has a lot of influence from Third Strike. Yeah. And that's obviously a big part of why I like it so much. But even apart from like my own personal preferences, I feel like the skill set required to become good at either of the games is really similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's that far off from if you want to talk about 2, 3, 4, or 5. Yeah. They're all pretty similar. And, and I agree with you guys. Uh, I remember I mean, saying... I Probably like I said, like 2016, I still that that five really reminded me of of Third Strike, even all the way back then in a lot of ways. So <laughs> I do agree with you guys in that regard. 
I, I, I honestly do. I mean, I do disagree to a, dis to a, to a, to a level. I do think it takes two very different kind of, I guess it's not skills to be a top player, but skills to, get, to reach that point. You need two very different mindsets to find your enjoyment out of four to keep you to play long enough to get good between the two games. They really do favor different mindsets. And the only reason why I feel like I'm, I'm spot on about this is because there's a lot of people that I've talked to who are like, I don't like Street Fighter 4. And I'm like, okay, try this game. And they're like, oh my God, this is, I love this game. Or I don't like Street Fighter 5. I'm like, okay, try this game. Based on just kind of a psychological profile on them. I've been pretty freaking spot on about that. Uh, recommending that like someone's like I don't get this in Street Fighter 5 and I'm like that's because you're this kind of player and here's what you need to understand or play this game instead and so I do feel like there is a different skill set at least to get to the point like I said at the highest levels yeah it all boils down to the same thing when you know the game at the highest levels it's all hey what do I think he's gonna do what do I think he, what do I think he thinks I'm gonna do you know at the highest levels it's the same so yeah you're right that at that level it requires the same kind of skill but what it takes to get good at the game or to even appreciate those games, I think, are two very different paths to get to the same spot. So that, that's where if, I stand. If what, if what you mean is preference rather than skill set, then I think it's true that d different people who prefer different things will more likely put in the time to get good at one game or the other. I don't really think that's what I'm talking about, whether somebody prefers to do something or not. But no, instead, no, no. I, I mean, the, 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 the question here is, how have the skills to be a competitive player changed? And I don't think that they've changed very much. People's subjective likes and dislikes, different question, for sure. Okay. But what are the skills to be a competitive player? I feel like they're very similar. Time All over. right, well, that's over with. Thank God. Street Fighter <laughs> V sucks. On to the next question. Well, well, well. Uh... All right. What was the second one we're doing here? We wrote this down. It yeah. is, oh yeah, most and least FG mechanics. So what are your, actually, you know what? That ended up losing by literally one vote. Oh, did it? Yeah. Okay. Thomp, thomp, thomp. <laughs> <laughs> so we had planned to do that, but I guess things have changed since then. In fact, the winner is with the release of King of Fighters 2002 oh, Ultimate Match, widely viewed as the best KOF game. Having rollback netcode, should it see more play than Tekken, Dragon Ball Fighters, or Street Fighter V, or do people really not care about rollback netcode unless it's included in the big three games? First off, I want to say that I know it's a matter of contention to say that KOF 2K2 UM is widely viewed as the best KOF game. I think this is just another issue of people preferring one or the other. Uh, you know, KOF is not my series particularly, but I know people who would say that, and I knew, know people who prefer 98 or 2002 or 13, I've heard 97 that some people really like. So I think this is maybe not as black and white as this questioner said, but the general question of like, should a game that has rollback netcode that is considered a classic see more play than modern games that don't have good rollback netcode? So here's, here's kind of how I feel about that. Uh, I don't think that rollback is something that uh, necessarily is going to bring new players to a game. I feel like good netcode is an expectation when a video game is released. Um, I don't I don't think it's a bad thing to add later. I do think it's a, a positive thing. Uh, if you look at, like, Aru. Aru is... There's been reports on Twitter of Aru waking up early to go play KOF with his boys in... Uh, New York and, you know, across the, the planet. And he's really excited to play the game again. But what I think Rollback does when you add it to these these older games is it brings players back to the game. People that were playing on maybe like Fightcade or something like that where they could play on a Rollback that wasn't exactly designed for the game. Sure, they're, they're going to be on those systems, but when you add it to the actual game, when it's built in, I think it's bringing back tons of players. I think it reinvigorates life into the game. It's not going to bring it. It's probably not going to bring in too many brand new players, right? Like, if you've never played King of Fighters before, just because 2002 Unlimited Match gets rollback, that's maybe not enough to make you want to play KOF now because you probably would have played it before if you really wanted to play it. However, you know, if, if the online play had three players before, well, guess what? Now it has 300. It's 500 because all these older players are coming back because they can actually play the game now. So I don't think it's important to 
bringing in new players, I think it's just important to keeping the life of a game, um, you know, beyond the first couple weeks of, of release, especially for older games. New games, I think it's a whole different story, but that's that's not what we're talking about right now. Yeah. I mean, all I just hope is that SNK sees the life that's been breathed back into KOF 2002 UM to Garou Mark of the Wolves to Samurai Showdown 5 and see the kind of boon that they have had on Steam just by updating the netcode and probably will have a little bit longer sustained life as well and just get Code Mystics to put the rollback netcode into KOF 15. Please, please. Uh, I just, I don't, like, as a player who super, super loved Samurai Showdown and just doesn't play it at all because of the rollback, Dude, uh, because of the delay. You already know we're on the same page there, James. It's so painful. And, you know, um, does get this game getting the rollback mean it should be played more than the others? No, because the game was in 2000. It's an 18-year-old game. I mean, the game can drink now. You know, I mean, that's the <laughs> thing, right? So, like, it's it's... Old games are going to survive if they just survive, right? Like, Smash Melee will survive because the players want to play it. Uh, you know, if a game is going to have a big scene and be bigger than other games, that's just really up to the community. I don't think there's a should. I don't think that there's a, you know, no game deserves to be bigger than others. It's just if people are playing the game, then that game deserves to have it. Every one of these games, if the community does their job the, and, and people play the game, they will be one of the main games to be played. Like I, I always bring up the example that Sailor Moon S, which wasn't even played in its time, is being played now <laughs> because right. some people have found it and enjoy it and love the silliness factor of it. If people are there to play the game, the game will be played. And that's the only... So the only answer of should a game be bigger than the other game, the a only answer to that is yes, if the community is bigger than the other games. <laughs> that's it. <Right. laughs> really Tautologies, I love them. It's just really about community, in my opinion. And, and, and also, man, to kind of build on what you said, James, like Sailor Moon, like, yeah, that's, that's a good retro example, but even like Uni... Uni was a game that was extremely grassroots, mm -hmm. and people started playing it, playing it, playing it. Tournament numbers grew, and then boom! All of a sudden, it's at Evo. Yeah. So yeah, man. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I don't. I don't think that yeah. adding rollback to a game necessarily means you should play it over something else you already enjoy. Play whatever the hell you like. But like I said, these older games, when they get rollback updates, they're just bringing in the players that they already yeah. had, and a few new ones. A few people are going to straggle in, of yeah. course. Um, but it, it really does help the life of the game itself by giving people a way to practice without just training mode or, you know, somebody in their in their living room with them. You know, yeah. being able to practice from New York to California is a big deal. And it's a big deal that it's actually just on Steam rather than having to require that you download Fightcade or Fightcade 2 now right. and the ROMs. And that's the whole, it's not like it's very difficult, but it is certainly more steps. And even being aware of it is, you know, you have to know about it, right? Rather than what's on Steam today, like, right? It's it is a lot more approachable for people who aren't quite as like, yeah. in the know, I guess. And that's great. I, I think that is really important. So yeah. I agree with you guys that it's not the case that like 2K2 UM should be the biggest game now because of rollback, but rather that. It should just be viewed as, like, this is a great thing for the community. Maybe the community does grow a little bit. I do hope that happens. And for the people who are still dedicated players, because I know there are many, this is now a much more approachable way to do it. And, um, you know, I mean, I've been told by some people that in some countries, 2002, 98, these games are still among the most played <laughs> games uh, in a way that has been described to me, at least, as being in the way that sort of, like, Melee is still really, really popular in North America. Uh in fact, like had a resurgence and is one of the most popular fighting games. Um, that that's how some of these older KOFs are. So for those players, I think that's fantastic. I hope that in those regions it remains and maybe even grows a little bit. But for picking up a lot of new players in other regions, I don't think that's something to expect. I just think it's we should just be happy for the players yeah. who are into it that their game can be played online much more easily. Yeah, yeah I, and, I agree. And, and just to kind of cement the whole thing. But that, but 
I still stand that every fighting game has to have rollback. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, saying that like, you know, like, oh, ne- rollback netcode doesn't necessarily mean we should play it, but yeah, that also doesn't necessarily mean that fighting games don't ne- don't need to have rollback. Yes, they do. Please put rollback in every fighting game. Would Uni and Samurai Showdown and Grand Blue Versus and Dragon Ball Fighters and Tekken 7 and Street Fighter 5 if they fixed it, like, would they all benefit from super good rollback netcode? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I wouldn't good, have to good be... Good netcode for- is necessary but not sufficient for games to be popular. Mm-hmm. If the netcode is bad, it, it won't be popular nowadays. Like you yeah. guys are talking about even Grand Blue, as gigantic as it could be, right? We all know that it's because we can't play offline and only online, and online's bad. That has been a huge problem for that game's and community. Sure. So, so netcode is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Meaning, if you have good netcode, that doesn't mean that the game will be popular. It's just that without it, the game won't be popular. Yes. Mm-hmm. KOF 14. Just put in good netcode. KOF 14, Samurai Showdown, Soul Calibur 6. A lot of these games were really like their potential was kind of kiboshed by the net code. For yeah, it sure. was completely stifled. Sure. Oh man, the golden age of Altimore in those three <laughs> weeks in early 2020, <laughs> when we had actually good net code, and in order to do it, we were ruining things for PlayStation players. But at least part of the scene, at least like a chunk of the player base in Street Fighter Five, had for that brief shining moment good net code. Golden age. What a time it was. What a time it was. I remember playing Adam Keats matches. Hart played Street Fighter V with me during True. that time. I mean, he did. I mean, I still remember when we were playing online uh, with the Altimore patch and I was playing it. I had forgotten we were online. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> that's how that's how it <laughs> felt. I mean, honestly, I feel that way right now like when I'm playing Soul Calibur on Parsec, but I'm also not super good at Soul Calibur to probably be able to make that distinction. But even all the strong players are super enjoying it out there. You know, when you can play these fighting games online and it feels wonderful. It's oh god, it's so fun. But when you're like so the the bad net code is ba- is equal to bad joysticks. Remember how I said like when we go from the arcade to the console age, and then now we're going from the offline to the online age. It's going to be very similar uh. complaints. Honestly, bad net code is going to be our broken joysticks. You know what yeah. I mean? That's basically what it's going to be because nothing made me more mad than losing because the controller didn't work. Except for when the net code is bad and I'm losing because of the net code. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, if you were at an arcade that kept up one fighting game but not the other, you played the game that had the controls kept up. Dude. Or if you had a choice of two arcades to go to and one didn't keep up the controls and the other did, you went to the one that did. Yeah, for sure. Had to say, a big at, least, at least you could go to a different arcade. That's not an yeah. option for online play. I, I like stuff. that. So yeah. Keith says that... Uh, there is a term for this. It's, we call it control confidence. Losing control confidence causes frustration. You have just described one of yeah, my sense. biggest like personality traits of fighting games right there. When I do not have control confidence, it drives me absolutely up the wall. And so I'm remembering that forever, Adam. <laughs> that is now <laughs> burned in my brain forever. Yeah, God, now anytime I watch your stream or watch it, you're going to be control confidence over and over again. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. Let's go to the next topic. Cool. We did it. Let's we did it. Up. Yay. Good summarize, work, everybody. Summarize what else do we got? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Let's talk about some tournament results. So I wanted to briefly bring up Street Fighter League Japan. And... You know, I'll briefly tell you that the current team in the lead, it's of course taking place over several weeks, is Fudo Gaia, which is Fudo, Dogara, Pugera, and Shuto. They are 2 0. Uh, they are tied with Tokido Flame, which is Tokido, <laughs> Itabashi, Zangief, Ryusei, and Storm Kubo. It is so silly and fun to watch. It's it's mega esports. It is maximum. It's such maximum esports that it's not even annoying anymore. It's like <laughs> to a degree of it's just hilarious. Yeah, like it's watch- campy. 
it can't be is a great word for it. Great, great word for it. It's really fun to watch. Uh, it's all if you can check it out on Capcom Fighters YouTube or their Twitch when they uh, stream it. Um, they stream a live Japanese only language version, and then after that, later they stream a version that has English subtitles, and the YouTube has English sub uh, subtitles. So you can hear what you can understand what they're saying, uh, which I you know can't otherwise. And it's cool. I mean, they are. Some of it's just like real mega esportsy. Like, I will try my best. You know that kind of like. How are you going to do today, Tokido? I'll try my best, and that it's like that kind of stuff. But then, <laughs> occasionally, there's like very funny responses. Some of the players are hilarious. The commentators are really funny, and there's a level of production that is yeah, campy is, is an excellent word for it. Like it's very produced. It's like yeah. listening to an album that like maybe like the producer should have like chilled out a little bit on, but because they went so hard on it, it like gives it a different kind of charm, which is yeah, kind of silly and zany. So I, I recommend it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's quite different in format than the US SFL uh, as it was last year. Yeah, but, by yeah, the it's way, cool. Grinning Oni, just to kind of address the Altimore patch thing. I mean, it was bad that the, it kind of messed up crossplay just because a lot of people out there did use it to be jerks. And there's a lot of people who aren't in the know enough to know why it happened. And so it was a bad thing. Like, honestly, it was bad that it ruined crossplay for that reason. Uh, I just think they should have just ported it over exactly as it was. I don't know why they made their own version of it afterwards. So, <laughs> no one We'll never know, yeah. I'm sure. So, like I said, check it out. The commentary is really different. They have three people commentating, and, well, there's uh, just an analyst. Tomiko just does an analysis. But the other two commentators, like, take a team's side, and so they're like, one of them is like, I'll be the commentator for Tokido Flame, okay. and I'll be the commentator for Mago Scarlet. And they, like, talk like that, you know? Um, which, again, is, like, just super mega esports and kind of funny. I mean, it sounds like so much more of a produced show. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It's like, less... like, you, like it would be on TV. Like, it's a right. very produced. It's but less... even on TV, it would be like, this is pretty silly. It's less reality, almost more scripted, you know, kind of in a way, right? Well, so... the, I mean, it's... I, I, well, I don't sure mean I the matches. That, I don't mean the matches. I mean, everything yeah, around yeah. it. Everything around it, so... It's definitely worth a watch. It's it's yeah. fun. It's funny. I mean, the fact that they have that WWE wrestling kind of thing where one commentator goes for one side and the other one goes yeah. for the other is pretty interesting. Daigo played Seth. We need to do weird. that, David. Next time we commentate, let's do that. Okay, I'll pick we one. We have done that in the past. I'll yell We've at done you. That. About... Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, it's fun. Daigo played Seth, huh? He did, yeah. He lost, but it was funny. <laughs> and I, I heard later that his teammates were like, wait. You know, like, he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to try Seth. And they were like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> There's like money on the line, dude. And he was just like, yeah, he's the team leader. So he was just like, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to play Seth. <laughs> what a jerk. I know. What a jerk. <laughs> Those teammates are like, no, play Kyle. Yeah, uh, I'm going to play Seth. Don't worry I thought it was. That was anyway, like the, it's, that it's was really like funny. the. The Evo East a long time ago where me and a, a friend were trying to find another player to be on our Guilty Gear team. And I didn't know Justin very well at the time. And Justin was like, I'll join your team. And I was like, sick, we got Justin Wong on our team. This is going to be sick. And he really didn't play much Guilty Gear. And I was so no. sad. <laughs> <laughs> he like dinked around with Potemkin a little bit probably. He actually played, I think, Biken or something like oh, that. Oh, really? At the time. Okay. It was something weird like that. But yeah, I was really sad. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. uh, as far as the Street Fighter League, the SFL Pro US starts this week it's going to be streaming thursday at four o'clock pacific time so yeah. check that out again the style's really different the format's really different but i'm looking forward to that i thought it was fun last time mm -hmm. uh the other thing that we got is that the playstation open happened for street fighter 5 james you're commentating that right uh yeah we commentated that uh say jam and i commentated that 
Uh, I mean, I'm surprised so few people actually entered it. I mean, like, uh, in terms of, like, you know, high-level tournament guys that we know, there was a $1,000 prize pool there. I mean, it was one of the smaller ones compared to some of the other PlayStation Open stuff. But uh, Eli the Curry ended up taking that one, and, I mean, he was my pick going in. I, he's mm. just such a strong player at this point in time. But I definitely want to give a shout-out to Child233, who played the craziest, ba- like, this Balrog, I mean... At first, I was like, what is this wild child here? And But then, it's like, as it kept going, it was just like... And then I noticed his dojo name is What Is Respect? And, <laughs> like... Yeah, there you go. It fits so well with the way that he played. And I would really like to see more from this guy. I thought he played really, really well, and I was excited to see it. And, uh, you know, if there is... Honestly, maybe the biggest thing is that the PlayStation series, you know, this PlayStation Open series needs to uh, advertise a little bit better to more people. Yeah, I think that's true. I think I don't see enough. I I have seen Child and other stuff before, but Mm -hmm. I think that's right because the same kind of thing happens for Mortal Kombat. Like, Mortal Kombat is on PlayStation's Open tournaments. Mm -hmm. It has been for a little while. And, yeah, I always feel like I just, like, run into seeing it or like somebody lets me know that it's happening without (laughs) there being like hey everybody like guess what's happening today like i just i'm following everybody who commentates and plays in it like you would think that i would see their tweet but i just don't right like it it definitely needs to be bigger because like i said we need to show them that it's worth doing these kind of things and to support the fighting game community in a lot of ways so uh, it's PlayStation. I mean, they're they're doing this and they're showing stuff on their channel and things, and I think that's really important. And we had some really good matches in there, and I I still remember seeing some people in the chat like who are new to fighting games. They're like, "This is really exciting. This is really fun," you know, mm-hmm, kind of things. Cool. So you know, th- th- that's why I think it's kind of important. Uh, so I mean, it's on us as well, especially as influencers, you know, to try yeah. to. Uh, spread the the word on these things a little bit better. So uh, that's something that I'll try to work on in the future. So you got to influence better, buddy. Yeah, and actually, speaking of, uh, actually, I'll save this for the. Remind me that there's something I want to talk about in sure. in the uh, once we get to the FGC. All right. News. I also wanted to say congrats to Mira for winning Queens of Quarantine, which took place this past weekend as well. Uh, All women SF5 tournament. And so congratulations to their apartment, <laughs> to yeah, right. Eli Curry and Mira, <laughs> uh, who have, like, probably the best, like, the strongest Street Fighter, like, household. I, like, who would even be in contention for that? Um, they're, they have a super good stream as well. Check them out. High five to them. Also, we had the Shore You Can scrimmage this past weekend, mm-hmm. and it was awesome. I had a lot of fun. Dude. It was we had- very interesting. Bad Mark ended up winning it. And we really had like some legit, super good <laughs> matches. We like, had probably these are the, supposed the... to be gold ranked and under players, and they are. I mean, they're not like making it up, but nevertheless, honestly, some of the matches we had were like as intense as you'll see <laughs> anyway. It was one really match fun. came down to t- last game, last round, last second, last pixels. Like literally, it could not have been any closer. It wasn't a timeout. It was a KO, but it was at like one second on the last game on the last round. It was like ridiculous. <laughs> for sure. Uh, That's it for tournament results. Okay. Ooh, and we had only a minute left. Nice timing by us. All right. As far as yeah. some other game news, there's not a lot of other stuff to discuss. Dive Kick is on sale for one dollar in the Humble Bundle. So oh, if you have kick. never played that, check it out. It is a lot of fun. There's a lot of depth there. There's a lot of silliness there. There's a lot of scene in jokes there. There's voice work by lots of people from the FGC. Also, it has rollback. That's true. Nice. And next time, if the creator of the game of Dive Kick wants more people to do voice acting, you know, please let me know. I would love to do voice acting. So, <laughs> Try my product. <laughs> Community news. First Attack 2020 has extended their registration, so things are still going on. First Attack is, of course, an offline tournament. Most years, this year's got to be online like everybody else's, and they are doing it over a series of weeks. So this coming weekend is actually when it begins, but it's non-fighting game stuff. They've always had lots of other things yeah. going on. There's always like been League also and Overwatch also. There's, they've always spread out like that. 
And they're doing that again. So this weekend is Overwatch and Fortnite and whatever other stuff. And then Damn. the... <laughs> hey, David. Go check that out. How much and, do you uh, care about those games? <laughs> oh, they're only the most watched and played competitive video games in the world. Right. Um, but cares? as far as... as far What did you say? I said, who cares? I'm all about the fighting games. Uh, I definitely agree with that. Um, the fighting games start in two weeks. So that's when they'll be doing like Grand Blue and Melty and Undernight and Dragon Ball and Soul Calibur and Sam Show and MK and Marvel Infinite and Skullgirls and Street Fighter V and Injustice 2. Wow. And Smash Ultimate and Tekken 7 and Killer Instinct and Power Rangers. And then the top eights for some of those games will be the following weekend. So James and I are going to be doing commentary for Street Fighter V, which will be on November 1st. Yeah. Cool. All right. And then I think there's one more thing. Oh, yeah, DreamHack bought ESL. How about that? <laughs> like how you say that. Oh, yeah, they bought ESL. That's I don't know. Crazy it's crazy to me, but I mean... I mean, out of left field, maybe, but I had long heard about problems for ESL that they had been... Oh, yeah, that was... I don't know, many thing. years ago, right? Like, I've been hearing that they haven't had enough funding that, that oh, people have been let go. Yeah, I mean, they, they were openly talking about it. It wasn't even, like, yeah. a, a rumor. It was, like... Yeah. Very much was obvious ESL was struggling. So, sure. cool. I'm glad someone bought them. Hopefully they do well now. Yeah, they they have a structure. I mean, if nothing else, whether the name exists or not, and I think they are intending it to exist, but, you know, like when Activision bought MLG, mm-hmm. what they're buying is not just the name. They're buying, like, the infrastructure, job, the, the people, like, the professional knowledge that they have that they've built up. And so that could be useful. So we'll see what comes of that. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to make of this. I I hope, I mean, I hope it keeps ESL rolling. I hope they don't lay off anybody who's been there because I, we know, we all know a lot of people at ESL. I have some very good friends at ESL. So I hope. Do we still know people at ESL? I thought everybody I knew at ESL was gone. Uh, I know a few people left at ESL, maybe. (laughs) But yeah, I would, I would hope that they would be okay on the transition. Let's just put it that way. So. For sure. uh, Let me add one more thing. Uh, I got this from uh, Toffs. Uh, who uh, I met at Evo Japan. I think it was the first Evo Japan. I, he had been on my stream oh. chat a lot. He is from There's New Zealand. Little... And uh, this weekend is Southern Cross Up 2020, which is uh, their first offline tournament in months. months oh, months, man. Months. And little... we all know that New Zealand has less COVID cases than the White House in the last By week. By a lot. Yeah, yeah like, by a lot. Like their last like few months have less cases than the White House has had in the past few w- past week or something. So they're doing their first offline tournament in quite some time. There is online registration for it. They've got Tekken, Street Fighter Five, Smash Brothers Ultimate, Soul Calibur Six, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, and much more. And he also wrote up a little bit of uh, backstory. The tournament is being held in Hamilton, New Zealand's fourth largest city, and an hour's drive from Auckland, which is the biggest city. Uh, the tournament is traditionally held in Auckland, but due to cost, logistics, and uncertainty of securing a venue in Auckland uh, because of COVID and all that stuff like that, it seemed logical to move it to the neighboring city. Uh, they had a major lineup in April before going into lockdown. Uh, but you know, they are here and ready to do this. And so you can check them out. Let me see if I can get their stream information here that you can, uh, check them out over here. I think the streams, uh, Oh God, where's the stream information? I'm going to check the smash GG. Shout out to Jasmine and her very cute, but also aw headdress right there. Yeah, I know. She's got the, and actually, I think. I'm close to, I think, being able to take the cone off, to be honest with you, because it, mm. the, 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 the abscess is healing well right now. In fact, it's just a gigantic, like, gigantic chunk of scab on her butt, basically. I'm not sure we need to go into this part I feel of like it's about to fall Big off old at chunk some point of scab. in time. Yeah, uh-huh. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Uh, you know what? I'll have Toffs uh, tweet me or message me the stream. Yeah. And I'll let you guys know what the stream is on Twitter. So there you Shout go. Shout out to Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, for doing a great job out there. And also, I think she's only 40 years old, so shout outs to her for that. That seems difficult Look, to do. I I'm believe just... she's been leader of her party since 
she was younger than me currently, which is like, I feel like I'm at the age where some things make sense and people are younger than me. Oh yeah, the best athletes in the world are younger than me. That makes perfect sense. A very successful prime minister was leader of her party when she was younger than me. I feel like I'm not that old yet, but anyway, congrats Look, to her. She is killing it out there. The way that this country has been going, I feel like a 30-year-old could probably run the country better than most people. Oh, would. James, you take literally a random person. <laughs> I mean that in the literal sense. If we were to do what ancient Athens did and literally choose lots to see who would be in control, it would be better. Yeah, yeah. No, no I really question. believe that. No, yeah, no, I mean, you're, it's facts. Uh, All right. As far as another thing that's upcoming this coming weekend is Capcom Pro Tour Online Europe West number two. All right. That's all. Ooh. Rocket Arena season two comes out shortly. It's got a new character, tomorrow. Leaf. That's interesting. Yeah, it comes out tomorrow. They have changed the dodge mechanic a lot. There huh. have been some. Now it's a. Uh, I don't know, eight way is not the right term. But omnidirectional. Like there's more, omnidirectional, whoa, yeah. Whoa, there's whoa. a lot more ability to control where you end up. Interesting. And and uh, so, yeah, that's that's so, cool so, for movement in the air and for evading shots. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toss is in the chat. Please post the link uh, to the Twitch chat, to the Twitch, for where the stream will be held. Please, please do, Toss. Thank you. And there's some balance changes for characters as well. Only a few. Yeah. Yeah. Play, play Rocket Arena, guys. Looking Come forward on. to it. All right. And lastly... lastly oh, well, I was going to oh, add one please, thing. See, you don't need to do it. Don't have her... Oh, no, I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> I've seen up close pictures. I am aware of what it looks like, but I'm not sure everybody no, else needs to. I was trying to say... Uh, I just want to say that Red Growth is really stupid in Teppin. That's all I'm going to say. So there you go. Go okay. ahead. What's also, twitch.tv slash standing fierce and twitch.tv slash standing fierce two, the number two. Gotcha. Those are the two streams for. Is it this weekend, the tournament in New Zealand you're talking yes, about? Yes, this weekend. This weekend. So. Cool. Check it out. Yeah, Man, so definitely check them out if you want to watch some cool New Zealand action. Imagine living in a place where the world gets to go on. Can you imagine that? <laughs> what, a, what a privilege. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I will say one thing, though. I actually kind of don't. I actually kind of am starting to really dig the samurai hair. Like I just like it now. Yeah, it looks cool, dude. I agree. Well, good news, James. You can still rock that after the pandemic. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's. I'm just <laughs> that's, trying to find a, a silver thing. lining, man. I'm just trying to find uh, a single right, silver right, lining. Right. That's all. It looks good for sure. Also, the last thing we have to bring up in terms of news is that James Chenzor got a new personal computer. Oh, yeah, that's right, yes. Well, ordered a new personal computer. Let me phrase it that way, considering what happened earlier in the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ordered one. Yeah, hang on a second. So, hang yeah, second. Me, and, me and James stayed up late one night. And by stay up late, I mean uh, we were both on our normal schedule at the time. Yeah, okay, yeah. And uh, we were looking up computers and stuff. And so uh, I found a, a decent deal and was like, all right, James, let's pull the trigger. And he was like, are you sure? And after I said yes about 55 times, he... Uh, he finally ordered it, so I think he's going to put the specs. Yeah, you're putting the specs on the screen, aren't you? Oh yeah, let me do that. So you guys really can quick. see what we actually came up with. Uh, we did our best to future proof as much as possible. Yes. You're not going to see a shiny 3080 or 3090 in there because, well, oh, they're just cool. extremely expensive and, and hard to get a hold of right now. Um, it's Dell 386. Yeah, guys, we're we're rocking a Pentium too. <laughs> actually, that's that's probably what two, James is rocking two right now. Pentiums. Two I mean, you fit two in there. Who knows? Technology is wild. Amazing. Sorry, I, I had forgot when I had closed all those web pages. I closed the one that had the thing, so uh, I gotta reopen it up real quick. Hey, that uh, makes sense to me. Man. But I'm really excited about this because if it takes me shorter than like an hour to an hour and a half to render the Tuesday show, uh, actually, it technically takes me about three hours to render the Tuesday show. Because it takes one time to handbrake it first to get the audio synced and to actually turn it to 60 frames per second, which it's supposed to be when it's recorded. And then after I edit it, it takes another hour and a half for, you know, uh, Premiere to actually render it. If that actually gets a lot faster, oh, God, I'll be so happy. Holy crap. Well, James, here's, here's the good thing about that. You don't have to worry about audio desync anymore. Yeah, so that's a whole exactly. hour and a half gone off your process, man. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it because because you bought it through Best Buy, you get a year for Geek Squad. 
Ex- yeah, exactly. Dude. They're gonna cover you no matter what. They're gonna cover Geek you, Squad dude. is Don't so worry. useful for me, dude. Like they've saved me so many times. Uh, oh, I lost the I lost the window capture too. How did I do that? All right, let's do this. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Hey, remember when I said you should put this into a Word doc because it would be easier? Uh, just, this is just, just fine. This that is out just there. easy as well. So here we go. <laughs> So let's see what we've got here. We've got a uh, Cyber Power PC Eclipse P41AX DRGB ATX Mid Tower Gaming Case with tempered glass and black color. But it looks sick, actually. Yeah, so, yeah it's actually wait, pretty cool. You're, you're making it sound dumb, but it actually looks cool. Why does this say laser engraving none? I definitely got some laser oh, engraving. Oh, no, James, you need to fix that. I you need to email them immediately. I definitely got some laser engraving, so I'll go find that out real quick. All right, what else do you got? What but else do nice you got? Thing, but the nice thing is uh, this this comes with a free 500 gigabyte uh, S- SSD as well. That was part of the sale. So I have that, but yeah, I've got an AMD Ryzen. Uh, I've got my Mojo Ryzen here, 9 3.8 gigahertz here. Uh Let's see, I've got... Uh, you got pretty cool looking liquid cooling, by the way. Yeah. I know you guys can't see the pic, but it's just like a cool... You know, it's a multicolored one. You know, you 16 know those things gigs look. of RAM. The AMD uh, video card is the... This is not the one, is it? I can't even see, so... It says the RX 5700. That's not the one that Nope, I... that should not be that card. I hope that it's not what you ordered. This is not... What the hell is going on over here? I really hope that's not what you ordered, because that's not correct at all. You should uh, look the into right that. Thing. Okay, I'll double check. I'll he, double he actually check. had a 2080 Super, this is, what's this supposed is, to be on this there. This is so. uh, not right here. I, I think you loaded up the default version I, of that. That's what I think is going on yeah, here, too. I don't you're think right, you're, right, you're, actually... right, you're right. I think I did. I think I did. So, let's see here. Uh, it'll be under items, of course. It'll be under what? Items. That's what I clicked. Well, do you, it won't be do you have there. like a like a receipt in your email? That's uh, what I would imagine. Let yeah, me... I mean, wait, go go back to click to view your order. I think it actually did show some of the stuff. Yeah, nobody can see. Oh, that. are you showing this to everybody right now? Not right this, now. Uh, not on the right now. Okay, here we go. This one says uh, I can show this part over here to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a lot. Yeah, that's that's accurate. Yeah, this one's accurate over here. So this one will actually be more Sorry, of the information guys. that we need here. So uh, this one has the let's see, uh, yep, the AMD Ryzen, the engraving. Yep, there it is, the engraving on it. The engraving is here. Uh, Thirty-two gigs of memory. The, uh, where is the video card? The video card, oh, it's the way down here. It's the GeForce uh, RTX 2080. That's the, the video 2080 card super. Down, down here. 2080 super. Gotta include the super, James. That's important. Okay, okay. Yeah, in, in any case, look, I got a really... Anyway, I there's the a new one. Computer. Yeah. It's on the way. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna we take... won't have audio desync anymore, thank goodness. They say that it's going to take uh, about uh, a month, for, three to four weeks, for them to uh, assemble it and send it to me. Uh, I did message them. They have responded that they will install the operating system on the SSD. So that yeah. will make the operating system that much faster and everything like that. Uh, I mean, look, I, my, I'll just say this much. The goal that I put out there was $2,500 for the PC. We didn't quite reach $2,500, but we got close enough that I was like, whatever, <laughs> it's fine. But the computer actually is more <laughs> than what we got in our goal. So I decided to just go ahead to get something super crazy because I just wanted to future-proof this as much as I can because... Uh, I just, I don't want to have to change it at any point in time soon. So, uh, yeah, yep. investing in it was such a, was an important part for me. So, I mean, f- full, dis- I mean, should I talk about how much this costs? Full disclosure. So they know we put their, de- okay, de- their donation want? money to use and stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, what are they costing? About like twenty six hundred, right? Yeah, it was twenty six fifty essentially. Twenty six fifty, no monitor, uh, just the computer. So there you go. We're in there. We have a, we'll so have a real here in three to four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Cool. Uh, actually, almost four times a Trump tax payment. Almost four times. So. <laughs> Eat that, Trump. Yep, uh, that guy is not my favorite, but yeah, I'm excited for the PC. I expect it'll be good, and that'll be in a few weeks. Yeah, cool. So. Cool. Can't wait. For a while, yeah, but like I said, a lot of that was from donations from viewers and stuff like that because there's definitely no way I can uh, get that <laughs> myself right now. So I appreciate that very much. To all the people out there who have donated and uh, helped out with this, like I said, hopefully that means that I can improve a lot of stuff. And I'm really excited just to be able to do things faster, to record this without the audio desync, without me clicking on another scene on XSplit and waiting 10 years before it actually changes yeah. scenes and all that stuff like that. So. Yeah, we're going to have none of the, all the issues we had earlier today with the Hawaiian shirt man on will not exist anymore. They'll, yeah, they'll all be gone. Yeah. Well, have a much better looking, dude, cleaner show. Knock on wood, and... dude. Don't, <laughs> like, you say that. <laughs> James, James, if you have these issues with a new PC, dude, it's you. It's not the computer. Right. Well, I'm just saying that it could also be Twitch sometimes or something like that. We never know. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, sure. Yeah. But generally speaking. Yeah. yeah, even if you still have 100 uh, tabs open, it should be okay on the new computer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Actually, that is what I'm going to do with my old computer. I'm going to leave my old computer around and only browse on that. And so that computer will just have a billion tabs open. And I will not be doing that on the main machine. <laughs> uh, All right. <laughs> that is hey, the plan. Thanks. Tetsuya for the 1,000 bits. Much oh, obliged. Thank you. thank you very much. Much appreciated. So. All right, everybody. I think that's about it for today. And now comes the three-hour rendering of the Tuesday show for myself to do, so... One of the last few times. Yes. <laughs> Burn right. Cool. Thanks, guys, for chilling. Dun, Thanks, dun, guys, for dun. hanging out. If you guys enjoy the uh, new layout and all that stuff, let us know. Let us know what you think we can do to improve the new layout and such. But other than that, thanks guys. Take care and we'll see you next time. Later. Whew, I'm, fine. I'm glad I can finally unbutton this shirt. It's been buttoned up way too high. I mean, you make jokes, but literally as soon as we get off stream, I take off my clothes.